smooth intro <laughs> welcome back i got it yo yes welcome back to everyone thank you for joining us for another episode of 10 talks episode 142 nice little even number yes <laughs> <laughs> we're almost at 150 do we celebrate or do anything at 150 no i just realized i ripped my poster oh my god should we i'm blaming that on you um i don't know what do you do for 150 I don't know. Let's rent out the venue from yesterday. Okay. Really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everyone will love it. It'll be sick as hell. But either way, yo, guys, um, number one, off rip. Thank you guys so much for joining us for another episode of 10 Talks. Uh, first things first is the elephant in the room. We're not in the forest anymore. Yes. We we built ourselves a cabin and we put up some nice drywall, got some shelves and, you know, we were uh, really in the place. We were tired of sleeping in the forest every night. Um, but no, okay. So guys, uh, once we finish up the podcast way later, you know, I mean, we just started now, but once we finish the podcast, you can't leave a comment yet, but once we're done, please leave a comment letting us know what you guys think about the background versus the green screen. Obviously the background is a little dull right now. I'm going to add more posters there. O'Reilly's going to add some stuff there. We're going, uh, we want to completely completely cover up this whole place with a bunch of stuff that we're interested in and we more like color and stuff yeah exactly yeah. way more color the the right side like riley side looks hella blank right now you haven't really added too much stuff yet no. the left side's pretty full but i could still add some more stuff right there as well i think once it's completely full it'll look way cooler right now it looks a little blank but um the green screen uh, i've talked about this before the green screen was like it was cool um because we could do anything we want with it and like i like being in the forest like that but uh it makes the quality lower you know what i mean it always yeah. looks like a, every time a we try a little grainier. Yeah, it looks grainier. It doesn't look as sharp. But when you take the green screen off, it looks sharper. And also, we just have all this cool stuff that we do like. I always want to show off, you know, or yeah. just like show on camera. You I have guess. a lot of stuff to display. Well, uh, also a lot of the stuff we have to display is like stuff that people have given us from the PO box. That, yeah, like, that's very true. I feel bad sometimes, like some like the the spray cans. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the other stuff, I'll post on Instagram once, and you know to shout them out. But then. Uh, that's it you know what i mean just like one instagram post so i'm like thinking like you know it'd be cool to like uh, have people continuously seeing it and being like what the hell is that you know yeah but either way let us know how what you guys think of the green screen versus not the green uh, without the green screen um i was going to add the green screen riley was saying like just do it without it just to try it out today yeah so we'll see what you guys think and yeah like i said it looks sharper um while riley's doing her little intro i'll drink a little glass of water cheers guys let's go let's go cheers well today we kind of had a chiller day, just got a lot of chores done, I feel like. But we also just started watching the new Avatar um, live action series on Netflix. Yeah, wait, hold up. Before we get into the Avatar thing, I wanted to um, start off the pod with, like always, <coughs> giving a shout out to all the members. Oh, yeah. um, wait, am I still able to do this without the green screen now that the green screen is gone? Hold on, let's test this out, guys. Um, can you guys... Oh, wait. Uh... No, it doesn't work anymore because we don't have the green screen. I can't show them the screen anymore. Oh, no. Dang it, dude. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll fix that. I'll fix that later. Okay. I had it like mixed into the green screen. So I was, I was like, I had, I had a feeling that would not work. But regardless. Okay, yo, guys. Huge shout out to all the members we have on this channel. Um, huge shout out to Monte702. Huge shout out to Jugman710, Skater Late, uh, Jimmy Smith, Willie Will, 210, Westside Loco, Thrift and Flip, Hella Crisp, Wasted Potential, Popo, and Ayazi. Yo, W to all you guys. We appreciate you guys so much for being a member. So far right now, the only thing you get with, with being a member is custom emotes. And also, shout outs from us every 10 talks. Shout out to you guys. <laughs> as well. I'm going to think of some more in the future, some more stuff in the future. I remember a long time ago, I used to do like, um, I would write people's name on a board behind me on stream. But then it became a thing where it's like, it's so hard to see the board, you know what I mean? So we would need to write your letters like really big, but it would be cool to get, um, I was thinking like, you know, those LED signs that like trucks, like uh, taco trucks have where it like, it can read hella words, but it keeps going left to right. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like it can have a, like, it's only this big, but words keep going across it. Like say a phone number, 
burritos, tacos, yes, I all know that what stuff. You're <laughs> so what if we had a, one of those that just had the members' names going the whole time? That would be cool. Uh, might be a, you don't think that would be a little distracting? For them or for us? For them. No, it doesn't have to be huge. What if you just did the intro like where how we used to do the Patreons? What do you mean? Where you, it would just like play on the screen. Oh yeah, show it on screen. Um, I and guess it we actually could looks like you can actually see their names. That was just getting annoying because I had to update it every time, and it wasn't easy to update. Had to oh. go to Adobe, re-export, do all that stuff. Sometimes I would miss it. Remember, sometimes I would like play it and it would be like unupdated. Yeah. <laughs> but also, guys, uh, we still have the harmonious shirts available. The Russian made tees available at this point. I think we have like 10 shirts left. And a couple people have been asking me like, are we going to restock this? I, I really don't know. Um, I think I want to like move on to potentially to a new design. You know what I mean? But I was thinking maybe we can do like uh, like two or three days where we're like telling people, okay, um, we're going to have the shirts available for two or three days. Once those uh, two or three days are up, we'll place the order, ship those shirts out, and those will be the last ones. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. so far... Um, like just in stock, I guess we have like around 10 shirts available. Um, huge, huge shout out to 3d God. We'll get into this later, but huge shout out to 3d God. He printed these custom harmonious, um, lighter sleeves. And this is basically my sticker design in my favorite color as well. Um, but it's like a lighter sleeve. He printed a, a bunch of them and, um, I asked him like, what, you know, what, what he, like, what should I do with these? Cause it's like a million lighter sleeves. I was like, I, I can't use all of them, you know? So he said to do like giveaways or something like that. So what we're going to do is every shirt that is uh, purchased right now until we, you know, uh, sell out will come with one of these uh, lighter sleeves. And um, I am trying to talk to uh, Popo or uh, AKA 3D God about potentially trying to make that like a product that people can purchase as well. Cause a lot of people, you know, would definitely be down just to uh, purchase a lighter and not, <laughs> and not the shirt as well. But so far right now, yeah, we, we got like 10 shirts left. Also, the sizes are kind of limited, guys. That's the thing. Uh, there's a bunch of white tees left, but the the orange tees are basically all sold yeah. out. The black tees are all sold out. The a lot of the I think it just I think we restocked on a bunch of white tees. That's why we have the white tees left. But um, yes, update on that. I was going to show you. Damn, I really can't show you guys. Regardless, uh, the website is yuristreams.com. Y-U-R-I-Y streams.com um, if you guys want to uh, cop a tee. But like I said, I want to work on some new designs. And also, Blazzy said that he's down to link up, um, link up and uh, and do a stream where we work on the new design on stream. I kind of don't want to do that because I would I wanted it to be a surprise. But he said he really wants to do that, so I think that'll be the plan. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, uh, that was a mouthful. I know. Sorry, <laughs> but uh, also, guys, um, Riley and I finally went out somewhere yesterday. We were gonna. Oh, okay, whatever. Oh wait, what? We'll talk about? Uh, oh, the, the Avatar yeah. thing. Oh, okay. Oh, no. I feel like we should go back to that now. The Avatar thing. Whatever. No, I'm yeah, down. Go, no, go, no. Go, no, go no, back. no, 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 no. No, it's go. fine. It's, it's okay. Really, dude? <laughs> yes. It's so not it's that just big embarrassing. Big no, it's not. Yes. I want to talk about that. Avatar. Okay. I'm very excited to talk about that. Okay. Anyways, yeah, we went out last night. It was kind of like going out, but then also it was kind of like uh, everyone keeps telling me, "Yuri, get a job, get a job." Guys, I got a job. It was a one day job though. <laughs> I'm proud of you. W uh W Lucha Live, bro. Uh dude, huge shout out to Lucha Live, man. Uh, honestly, Lucha Live, such a good homie, bro. And there's like it's rare to find homies like that where Lucha's like such a selfless person and he's like many, many a times, guys, like has like tried to hook me up with the opportunities, not even a way for him to make any profit at all. It's not like he's someone's asking for something to happen and he's like oh i can make a profit off this if i like hit up yuri he like literally has hit me up so many times like yo yuri um there's this opportunity here to make money whatever like here you go he's like if you want to do it, you should do it and like he's done that a million times to me so huge shout out to lucha the other day uh he hit me up saying like um that um first smoke of the day podcast pax and blackleaf uh they're throwing um their family reunion which they've done these before it's like they throw them once a year and i guess it's a uh, it's like for friends and family of the of the podcast and also for um um people who have been on the podcast like guests and shit for them to come on like alumni and uh it's just like a whole party for them just to kick it smoke celebrate and you know smoke some good weed and shit and basically lucia was telling me that they you know they do their podcast but they haven't really done too many live streams and they wanted to potentially live stream this event so that people can uh you know in their audience like see what the hell's going on because that event was definitely insane and uh shout out to lucha he like told, told him like you know my homie yuri does live streams and shit like that and they were like okay let's uh ask yuri to live live stream this event for um you know for us the one thing that was a little bit you know uh i guess like strange or difficult about it or like what i'm kind of worried about for 
the first smoke of the day's audience perspective is I've never been on first smoke of the day. Blazzy has, right? I've never been on there. Their audience doesn't know who I am. And Pax and Blackleaf were on stream or on camera maybe for like 10, 15 minutes. So the one thing I was worried about is like their audience, like just saying like, who the fuck is this guy? Like, dude, give us to Pax, give us to Blackleaf. We don't want to, you know, be carried around by this random dude. But I actually did get a, you know, like maybe like five, 10 DMs from people from specifically from the uh, first smoke of the day uh, audience telling me like, oh, um, they really enjoyed the, the stream and they thought it was really cool. That's good. People are saying yeah. like, um, because it's like, with something like that, it's so loud there. You know what I mean? Like, it's yeah, so it loud there that you can't really host. You can't really talk or interview. Like, people are saying, talk to some people. You can't. I was trying to talk to some people, and I was like, huh? What? Like, what did you like say? It was like a club. Yeah, it was super loud. So, the my perspective on streaming that event was kind of like a, a mobile uh, cam. Like, where there's, you know, uh, on YouTube, there's, like, these, like, random live streams. But they're just, like, these stationary cams. They're just in a corner somewhere. Mm -hmm. And it'll just show you, like, a street corner or something like that. So my perspective was just a moving cam that goes all around the, you know, the club the whole time showing you guys what's going on, you know? And I uh, I don't know. Like, some people told me they, oh, you know, enjoyed it. Yeah. And also, uh, shout out to Pax. He told me that um, a lot of people were telling him that they fucked with it as well. So Yeah, as long something as they different for them, too. So. Yeah. As long as they liked it, like, that's what I was kind of worried about. You know what I mean? Because it's like I wasn't really, you know, I don't advertise. You know, if I was, like, a business that advertised my, uh, like, streaming or video recording or whatever it is, and then I didn't really meet someone's expectations, then I'd be a little bit more stressed. But in this case, like, uh, you know, people just recommend me. And, and, like, you know, sometimes people are like, oh, yeah, sure, let's try it out. So... I feel like I'm I'm not setting my expectations super high because I'm just like some random dude. But still, I would want them to get the best you know experience as possible if they're gonna pay me for something. You're you so know? knowledgeable. You need to be like think higher of yourself <laughs> because you do know what you're doing. So that was a lot of stuff. Like I that's exactly what I would think for what they were asking you. Like exactly how I would envision it as well. It's like. I know a lot of people were saying like, go talk to this person, go talk to that person, and you didn't really know those people. Yeah. But realistically, they're there at the event to have a good time, too. Like, they're not really trying to be interviewed at that moment either. And it's like... Exactly, exactly. People you went up to a couple of different people and they're, you could kind of get the vibe. They're just like, hey, what's up? They're all busy, like, ta like running their booths and shit. Yeah. So. And even the few... It was, it was cool for their audience to be a part of the party, just like the community party, like, live, you know? Exactly. Like, you're part of the... Even though you're not physically there, you get to see what's going down. Exactly, so. yeah. I feel like yeah, that's what I was like thinking. Like at least, at least you get to see what's happening there. You know, we saw like a stripper dance on an airplane that was being dropped from the <laughs> sky. I've never seen anything like that. Probably mm -hmm. the first and last time I'll ever I'll ever see anything like that. Okay. <laughs> really? You always have to say the most weirdest shit. Oh, how is that? Go pee really quick. Oh my! We just we're only eight, nineteen uh, minutes into this podcast. You're leaving already? You just keep talking about it. <laughs> oh my god. I'm not gonna do Jesus Christ okay um regardless so guys the place where it was hosted at is called the uh, uh, um, penthouse it's just like a venue though this has like nothing to do with the with the podcast or the you know um the people that run the company and shit like that it's just like a venue they they rent it out but I don't I've never been to this you know I'm not a clubber I'm not a guy that goes to clubs and bars and shit like that so um I've never been to this place but it's in my area that I grew up in, in West Hollywood, I've skated past that line of people trying to get in that place a million times and have, you know, sometimes wondered to myself, like, oh, what are all these people waiting in line for? I finally, I guess, got the chance to go in there uh, for this live stream, and that place is huge, bro. It has, like, a bunch of pools in there. I'm not sure if you're meant to swim in there or not, but it has, like, yeah, a bunch of pools, a whole indoor section, I guess, like, a strip club area with, like, two floors, um... And I've never seen anything like that, like, not even in movies, bro. Like, not anything like, it's like, they have, like, a planetary system of, of all these planets and moons, and they can drop down from the sky and have people standing on them and, like, swinging around. It's crazy, bro. I was like, what the fuck? I was like, I, I honestly thought the danger level and, like, the level for risk was kind of insane. Like, you gotta be super acrobatic, like, not to fall off the fucking airplane that's, you know, 20 feet in the air of this, like, club and shit. I don't know, that was kind of insane. But, uh... Regardless, um, I remember I, I had even told Toke, I was talking to Toke and he was like asking me like what I was going to do that day and I told him I was going to go stream at this place and Toke was telling me like, yo, that, that club is known to be like hella, hella, oh shit, um, popping. But huge, huge shout out to uh, First Smoke of the Day for uh, giving us that opportunity to go stream it. Um, what are some like memorable 
things. I wish there was like more food options. There was yeah. there's really one truck. I kind of because it's a we, it was a weed event a little bit. It was like a club, but there was a, it was basically like a weed event inside of the club. Usually weed events have at least like three or four different food options, but the food option was fire. I'm also not gonna lie, it um. I don't know, dude. That food was busting. It was super good. My favorite onion rings. But I was farting like crazy last night. Ew. And this morning, I had like, like I was, I was like, uh, like you know, suffering on the toilet, dude. I was like, oh my god. I was like, what happened? What did I eat last night? And I remembered. I was like, that burger and those onion rings. I didn't have that issue. Really? I think it's the alcohol. Oh yeah, maybe that. <laughs> You're right. But um. But it was really good. Yeah, what did you think? Well, like, what was? How was your experience? It was cool. It was fun. It's been like different since I haven't been drinking like it. But I feel like it, honestly, it's like the same. Like the same way I'd be with alcohol is kind of like how it is. You definitely get a little bit more. No, that's not true. That's not true. I've been at the bar with you, uh, um, like pretty drunk, and you get dancey and like all lit. Yeah, I get dancy, You're but I was still dancy. <laughs> that's true. Well, that's because you took something else. But I was still dancy <laughs> before I took that. <laughs> um, you know what? I'll, I don't you, know. It was cool. It was just like it was super packed. I don't right? know. I yeah. It's just like all you do is go to like the booths to buy things, really. Yeah. And smoke. So. No, but Yuri was walking around the whole time, so it's not like we were just chilling, smoking, exact, listening to the music. We were like yes out and about doing stuff that's where it's like some people in the chat were saying like uh i was being awkward like i'm not talking to people like i said number one it's kind of hard to talk to people in there it's super super loud everywhere you go there's music blumping um but um, bumping not blumping um but number two uh is i'm like i'm not very tapped into the weed world guys like i used to be super super tapped into the wax to the weed world to the glass world to the you know to the growers to the seed guys all that stuff i used to be hella hella tapped in i just like you know, I'm I'm not as tapped in anymore. You know what I mean? Like I just started doing like other stuff, I guess. And so like I don't really know what's going on um, as much. So like there was a lot of people I was passing by in the chat was telling me, Yuri, why don't you talk to this guy? Why don't you talk to this guy? You just passed by this legendary dude. I'm like, I don't know anyone here. You know what I mean? Like and all, like Riley's saying like, how do we? If we were, if I didn't feel like I was like doing a job where like I needed to continue making the audience happy, you know, like walking around streaming different things, like I would have. We would probably post it up, yeah. talk to some random people, you know, met some people or whatever it is. But it's kind of hard to do that when, like, you're just walking around the whole time mm -hmm. trying to get some new shit, you know? Yeah, we literally, like, didn't even sit. I think we sat once. Yeah, I was so <laughs> happy to sit down <laughs> after that. When we, like, went to the car for a second, <laughs> I was like, oh, my God, this feels so nice. I know, dude. I sat down. I was like, yes, thank God. I had dude. no water the whole time, which was, like, so sad. Oh, dude, uh, guys, the water bottles in there were like literally mini mini size and they were eight dollars call me frugal i was like damn bro this is why people get hangovers <laughs> you can't get high. that was stupid can't they at least should have just had like one of the things where it's like uh, what is it what, are you, what would you call that a uh, water fountain? like a jug of oh. water where it's like pours oh yeah or just what the water things called? at a water fountain i'll drink toilet water dude. no i don't Not toilet, the, the water the that goes to the toilet i'll drink that water you could just have cups of water. Yeah, or cups of water, I guess. I don't know. People will probably start drinking pool water at some, <laughs> at some point. I was dehydrated. No, but dude, that that event was hella cool. Oh, dude, I had one question that when came like went in my mind. Um, as at one point, I think it was like towards the end, Riley and I sat down. We were like rolling up some weed. Number one, huge shout out to all. We'll get into all the companies and shit, but huge shout out to all the companies that gave us weed. We went home like millionaires, bro. That shit was insane. We came home with so much weed and shit. But uh, at one point, Riley and I sat down, I guess in the stripper section, you know what I mean? Like where all the strippers were dancing earlier. And I was like rolling up weed and there's all these dollars on the floor, right? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking to myself, like, how do they, there's cameras obviously, but like how upset would they be if I picked up $1 or $2? You know what I mean? Like, I'm not going to do it. But, like, how? what's the rule of, like, picking up the dog? Because they were there for, like, 20 minutes. I, like, we were rolling up, chilling. They were there forever. There I was, I don't even think there was, there wasn't strippers dancing. There was the girls that were the strippers, whatever you want to call them, bottle service girls, whatever. Oh, yeah, the bottle service girls. Um, that were doing, like, the on the helicopter, on the swings and stuff. Yeah. And when she was on the helicopter, I think there was, like, a cannon that shot out all, those, all those dollar bills. Because uh. all of a sudden it just went poof and there was hella dollar bills. So I think that it was like the club's shit ah uh, 
But yeah, I was like, how did... Because Dollar Bill landed on Lucha's hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> at one point, we're talking to Lucha, and Riley's like looking at his hat. She's like, Lucha, there's something on your head. He's like, what? What is it? And there was a dollar on Lucha's head. He didn't even it notice. It was so funny. <laughs> from the fucking... It looked like a feather in his hat, but it was, it was a dollar Yeah, from bill. the stripper section. That was so funny. But you know what I was wondering is... um, Okay, so that, that kind of answered that makes my question void but let's say hypothetically it was stripper you know money like but it was real dollars yeah it was real dollars but imagine okay hypothetically it was real stripper money like that people are throwing on the strippers right the i seen movies before i've never been to a strip club but i've seen movies before and in movies like the girls will like finish their dance routine and then they'll take a, a plastic bag and be like <laughs> like fucking stuffing the bag and then and then and then run off stage and like go call it a night and usually like my person my perspective was like the girls collect their own money and then dip out you know what i mean the they left the money on the floor and some dude was walking around and the dude was collecting the money and my immediate thought i think they're more i don't think they're strippers i think they're bottle service you see but here's what i was thinking there was multiple bottle service areas yeah. right what if out of the let's say there's four bottle service areas that one right there some dude threw ten thousand the other ones, some dudes, dudes through one thousand. Uh. How do they split the money evenly? I w if I was in the one thousand, if I was in the ten thousand area, I'd be like, I deserve a bigger cut. I don't know, babe. I'm not a stripper. I'm dude. You I can't get know. upset because I'm asking. This. I'm not saying I'm going to a strip club, dude. I don't I'm just know. asking fucking lo logistical questions because I'm I curious. I think they get it's mathematical their own. shit. I think they get their own shit. I don't think they're just throwing it like that. I think certain girls get their own money. I don't know. <laughs> I know they get their own money. I'm just wondering how they split it. I'm just. I have no clue. I'm not saying Google you. It. I'm not saying you're a stripper. I'm just saying we could well, fucking. Obviously we can hypothetically just think like, how would they go about it? Because if I was the girl who got ten thousand thrown on my face, and then the girl who got five hundred thrown in her face was like, I want you know even cut. I'd be like, no. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't know, babe. <laughs> Whatever, dude. God damn it. <laughs> Okay, um, what else happened that night? I don't even know. There was just so many people in this, like, hallway area, and at one point we were, like, stuck. I <laughs> could not move oh, at all, and I was I like, know. I felt like my little mushroom was hitting <laughs> my mushroom gummy. Oh, yes. Oh, dude, okay. And no. I was, like, in the middle of this crowd, and I was just like, I lost, I mean, Yuri and I were, like, separated, like, I lost Riley, people like, were two, pushing three times. in front of us and, like, trying to move out. And I was just like, oh, my God, if this mushroom hits right now. <laughs> I'm a freak out. <laughs> I'm not a die. So I was, like, just breathing, <coughs> trying to stay calm. And then Yuri was finally like, I can't do it. I can't do it. Let's go outside. And I was like, oh, thank God. <coughs> because, guys, I'm not, like, you know, I might be Japanese. Like, dude, like, I'm very respectful when it comes to, like, public walkways like that. It's like... <laughs> Like when it comes to like you know a public walkway and everyone's pushing and shoving, like if I see someone in front of me going the same direction as me, in my mind they're ahead of me. I'm not gonna cut them out of respect. Like I'm gonna follow them. You know what I mean? And I'm we're following this rule out of respect. We're just like you know following in line, yeah, trying to get across. Exactly. And all of a sudden we hear clear the walkway, clear the walkway, blah 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 blah, and then and like hell and like thirty people get past us, and I'm like. I'm like, bro, I've been waiting here for like 10 minutes. How long do I'm like, dude, no. At that point, I was like, bro, no. I was like, this is this is not organized. I'm like, <laughs> we're going to be stuck here forever. Yeah, I was fucked up. The person who cuts and shoves will make it to the front. I'm not finna cut and shove. I'm just going to go back. Not finna. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm using that correctly, but um, yeah, yeah that, was, that was insane. I, dude, I tried to not think about it, but this is why I don't go to... Um, you know, now I guess I'm a little bit older now, but like when I was younger, like this is why I never went to, um, uh, which I'm gonna call it, like, um, not parties, but, um, music shows. What the fuck? Oh, raves. Not raves. What's Concerts? it called? Concerts. Sorry. Music I shows. I couldn't think of the word concert. This is why I never went to a concert is because like I went to one or two and I was in those exact situations where you're in a huge hallway, you're desperately trying to like move. Yeah, you cannot move. And then, you know, it's not that big of a deal. It's like, fuck it. Like, I'm just trying to get from point A to point B. What if point A was fire, point B was mm -hmm. freedom? Bro, you're dead. Like, I'm not trying to be in that situation. I'm not trying to be the dude who's, like, pushing yeah. and shoving 
Oh, dude, like, yeah, like, those situations, like, like freak me the fuck out. When I, I stay far away from those situations. Small venues, and it's, like, a smaller stage where pe- everybody's just standing there. That's when it gets, yeah. like, those intense situations where it's kind of scary and people have to, like, get... That's why, like, I, I, like you know, shout out to all the homies that invite me to concerts and, like, you know, events or anything like that. But not to be on some bougie shit, but, like, unless I'm getting or we're getting some VIP thing or behind the scenes shit, I'm not going. Because it's, like, I'm just, like, my anxiety is going to be through the level. I'm just going to, I'm not going to be able to, like, yeah. chill. You have to do that when you're so young. Like, doing that now is just, like, even never going to happen. Even when I was young, my homies hated taking me to fucking clubs. We would go to, like, uh, OHM. Like, OHM was, like, the club in Hollywood, right, back in the day. It's not there anymore. We would go there, you know, trying to fucking party and chill and kick it, blah, blah. And then um, I would fucking uh, go to the balcony far away from everyone and, like, go smoke and shit. And then, like, my homies would come out and be like, bro, Yuri, you paid 40 bucks to get in here. You're just going to oh, chill on the nah. balcony all day. I'm like, bro, I'm not trying to be in there, dude. Like, I don't, like, I, I just realized I just don't like it. I try to force yeah. myself to like it. Then I realize I'm like, I just don't like being in these situations. You just, yeah, just not the vibe. I never really like the clubs either. I like more, like, bar scene. How do you meet people? Hey, my name is Yuri. <laughs> What's your name? It's just too much. It's just too much. Oh, you like cats too? Me too. I love this. It's so weird. It's like, what the? F- it's. <laughs> I can't imagine, bro. I'd rather go to a chill bar. Yeah, um, chill bars are more fun. <laughs> anyways, uh, what else happened that night? Um, okay, you know, like I, like I said, guys, my, Riley's probably right. My stomach problem. I mean, my stomach issues probably from the drinking the alcohol shit too as well. But that burger place, what was it called? The Last Stand? Stuck Up. Stuck Up. <laughs> That place is so good, bro. Um, w- one thing that Riley probably liked that I didn't really like is you have to... It's free, but you have to click add tomato, add lettuce, add all that stuff. I had to minus pickles, but all the other stuff you have to add for free. Riley doesn't do tomatoes, I guess, but you do do lettuce at least. You know what I mean? I but like, we, we didn't realize you have to add all that stuff. But what they did have was these perfect bus and onion rings. And I was kind of wondering... Bussin. I was wondering, like, how do you make these uniform? Because honestly, if you want uniform onion rings... 70% of your onion goes to trash. The big onions, it goes to trash. You're only using the little rings. You know what I mean? So I'm like, this fool's like, I don't know how he's doing this. Uh, but then he told me those are Burger King onion rings and those are Jack in the Box curly fries that he's um, uh, deep frying in, in uh, beef lard, which is like beef fat, basically. Mm-hmm. And he's like, that's why it's so good. Yeah, that shit was fire. Good. I didn't try the onion rings, but the fries were pretty good. I had the waffle fries, though. Better they needed sh- seasoning. Better than Chick Fil A waffle fries, cause Chick- yeah, Chick- I don't really like Chick Fil A. They have waffle no fries. seasoning. Yeah, they need the they need the. I always get the mac and cheese. That one sauce or whatever it's called. Yeah, no, I don't even like those fries. Dude, um, also guys, like I said, it was really hard to hear in there, of what was going on. But huge shout out to Blackleaf. Um, I like like I said, I was streaming for the um first smoke of the day channel, so a lot of the channel was like. Not a lot, but there was, you know, shout out to all the Harmonies King that was in there, but there was a lot of first smoke in the day, uh, you know, viewers in there who were saying like, bro, like we want to talk to back, uh, Pax, we want to talk to uh, Blackleaf and, and Pax was busy, you know, the whole time Blackleaf was on salesman mode the whole, I'm not sure if it's salesman mode, but like, or he's just super famous, but he was, every time you look at him, he's talking to someone new, like, like hell, hell energy. Like he has crazy energy. Yeah, dude. I was thinking. I was like, oh, I could not do that, dude. I, I was for th- six hours. That's what I thought too. Like yes, uh, I think it was today when I woke up. I was like, bro, like, th- like that's more energy than streaming. You know what I mean? Like I think streaming takes hell, hell of energy. Like he has to stand there and like give every new person like the same amount mm-hmm. of like interest and energy. And like he was busy the whole time. I was like, bro, it's crazy. But anyways, at one point he was like kind of free, so I went to go talk to him. And I was like, uh, you know, showing off the buds and shit because people were saying like, yo, show weed, show weed. And I thought I showed all the booths in the beginning, in the very beginning. But then I went around to show uh, show some more weed, and he hooked us up with three um, of his packs of the uh, Prism. Of the um, duct um, diamond duct tape, and I forgot what else. It's like right uh, to to the right of you, babe, next to the cereal boxes. He gave us this other stuff as well, and I asked him what the prices were. I'm not sure if it was the noise level, but I think he said these are hundred dollar eighths. I'm not sure. I I, I, I don't want to misprice stuff because people like you know are serious about the prices. They're like either you're gonna make my stuff sound too cheap or too expensive. But I I think I heard someone say these are like hundred dollar eighths or like very expensive eighths. So we're smoking on the prism right now. This is fire. Okay, I admit it, guys. I think it was cherry, no? It's not cherry. This is prison for sure. Oh, but, I don't know. Oh, no, and he gave us black cherry, yes, yeah. as well. 
Um, I admit it, guys. Riley and I be smoking mids. <laughs> you said yesterday, I'm. You said I'm a happy mid smoker. Yeah. Because okay. after we saw, I've always smoked mids. After we saw the prices, this sh bro, this is definitely a different experience. But this is out of our budget. This is crazy. How yeah, could you definitely not with the amount of spending this much with the amount of weed just with like okay if you're a dude who like just got into or a girl or a dude who just got into smoking weed and you're smoking like I don't know an eighth every two weeks easy I'll buy that of course but I'm smoking hell of weed bro it's like <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna have to give her to beans <laughs> it's, why is that always the first option <laughs> to, to afford this shit it's hell of fire though I really fuck with it. I'm not sure what the price was though. Like I said, uh, like it was really hard to to hear in there. At, at one point, some dude did tell me that uh, one of his weeds was a hundred percent, a hundred dollars an eighth. So I <laughs> forgot. Stupid. I forgot who he was, but uh, he had some eighth where like I was um, I was just like, hey, like he just looked at me, like caught eye contact. I was like, hey, how's it going? He's like, you know, check out the weed. I was like, oh, let me go, like uh, let me check it out. I smelt it. He, I was like, how much is this an eighth? He's like, a hundred. <laughs> no, never. That's it's not even cool. I, I don't think we're educated enough in weed to understand why it's a hundred because I always thought to myself that as well, right? But after smoking this weed, I'm like, there's or a are crazy you thinking and maybe that. it's placebo. I think it's placebo. But placebo? Placebo. The, I'm getting the female version of placebo. It's placebo. <laughs> Thanks. But uh this it's a way different experience. I don't know. Uh, can we also talk I about something else it. that happened yesterday? What? People always say I stink, right? <laughs> and I always say, no, I don't. And it's been proven many a times. House phone has smelled me in my armpits on po on the podcast many a times. Uh, many other people have smelled me. Blazzy, Potlord, you know, Tyrell said, you know, I, I smell fine. Like other people have came to the crib, said my, my crib smells cool. Riley yesterday, you know, I spent I spent like maybe an hour and a half, two hours doing an IRL stream on Kick, kick.com slash harmonious theory. And then right before the event, Riley scoops me up. I hop into Riley's car and Riley's like, hey, babe. She's like, what's that smell? And like, what smell? She's like, you smell like the streets. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck is that supposed to mean? She's like, you smell kind of weird right now. And I was like, what the? F what was like what? dirt? Thanks. Like you had I just been skating. Like, I just smell like dirt. <laughs> yeah like it wasn't like bo or like oniony you just smelled like dirt you know what i think it was it, i already said this is i think it's because i kept putting my backpacks and my bags on the floor and i think it smelled like piss and shit from the fucking hollywood floor and shit like that so i think that's what that was but also you gave me a perspective that babe like a long time like for a long time bro from like the age of like 16 to like 25 before i met you maybe 24 I spent, like, at least minimum five hours a day, every day, skating, sweating, falling on the floor, you know, like, my whole, my pants are dirty, my shirt's dirty, blah, blah, and then I would get invited to house parties or events or whatever it is, then I would go in the same clothes that I'd be skating in all day, and I never really thought, like, do I smell or, like, do people, <laughs> like, think about me any differently, but after I spent literally just, like, two hours outside and I got in Riley's car and Riley's, like, you smell weird. I like I literally had like a life flashback. Of, I never say that of either. every party and every event I've gone to, like post skating. I'm like, has no one ever told me I just smell like shit? Maybe they just didn't care. <laughs> you were younger back then. I think everyone smelled like shit back in the day. No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I think smelling good is the new thing. No. But also, guys, um, you know, like uh, in, in the content creation world, I don't know how it is in the weed world, right? But like in the content creation world, like, you know, working for the past company Riley and I worked for, I saw so many interviews happen. So many people, content creators come in and I've seen like a lot of fake flexing. A lot of people coming in portraying a lifestyle that they actually don't can't afford or they're like wearing crazy chains and you can tell they're not really, you know, in that position, blah, blah. But walking through that, through that event, every single booth, the, the they all they, you know if their if their company was called Bob's Bob's Blunts they all got Bob's Blunts bust downs <laughs> you know what I mean like they all got Bob's Bl Blunts bust downs Dior clothes Gucci bandanas and shit I'm like every fucking brand here seems like they're millionaires I'm like it's kind of insane like the 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 money that's in like obviously everyone already knows this I'm not new to this but it's just crazy seeing it firsthand in the small events where I'm like every single dude here 
looks like um drake dude like it's insane <laughs> okay <laughs> not handsome wise i'm not saying drake's handsome no i know I'm but I, like i'm not no about cuban crumb hearts all richness that. yeah richness saying. yes i don't think so i think there was like a lot of normal people there too i guess for the people at the boots but what do you expect when they're charging that much money for weed that shit's they crazy. obviously probably all have successful companies that we just don't know about because we should we start growing? Smoke that mids. Should I, should I just start trapping? I'm going I'm to become a trapper, babe. At this point. Fuck it, dude. <laughs> I want a, I want a Bob's Blunt's diamond chain. That'll be the first, that'll be my first purchase. Bob's Blunt. Yeah, I don't even know who that is. I just want it. <laughs> It'll be sick. <laughs> we did run into some dude. He didn't have a whole booth. He just had like a little like, it was almost like some fucking opens up a vest and he has like all these seeds in his vest type shit but he was just like i'm like yo what's up how's it going like, he was like yo chilling he's like you, you're you trying to grow i'm like nah i'm like my electricity bill's high enough already bro with my podcast oh, yeah. lights and he's like really and then he like shows me all these seeds he's like these are gonna make this much blah blah this one's bussing and then i was just like you know i didn't really i was just like yo no thank you at the time but then uh afterwards i'm like i like you know what if i was like all right let me buy those seeds and then I became a millionaire off those seeds. You could. What if we just stop 10 talks and we just start growing weed right here? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> chat. All the hypotheticals. One in the chat to continue 10 talks. Two in the chat to use these lights to grow weed. <laughs> what do you guys think, bro? Uh, what should we do? Riley says she's with it. Uh, I mean, someone said uh, Riley's with it for me to be a trapper. How would you explain that to your parents? Oh my god, babe. Yuri's, oh, remember Yuri's podcast? He was, yeah, he doesn't do the podcast. Right? He's a trapper now. I, co I come to the next Christmas just like wearing all Gucci. Oh my god. And like god. with diamond teeth, I'm like, what's up? You're so dumb. <laughs> what's up, fam? <laughs> happy, what's up, fam? Happy, happy New Year's. <laughs> all right, cheers, guys. Cheers. Um, What's the next thing we got to talk about? Oh, Avatar. Let's get into that. Yeah. What'd you think? I so we started it kind of last night but I literally fell asleep within the first 10 minutes but I think at first it was kind of like slow to get into but the effects and like their hair and makeup costumes like everything is so on point yes where I get what they're trying to do because the characters at first were coming off as corny and like acting like it was like a play almost but i think that's intentional because they want it to feel like the ex like the anime yeah because ang is literally like the same person exactly can you pass me one of the random weeds like just whatever which one is closest um but guys I, we talked about this a long time ago i asked riley like to watch um avatar that the last airbender cartoon you know anime with me and we watched it I know for sure there was many moments where Riley wasn't really watching or paying attention, but we got through it. So I'm sure he didn't remember everything. And also, I've watched it no, probably... No, watching it back, I remember a lot. You've seen it once, though, so I can't expect yeah. you to remember everything. I've seen it probably like four or five times at this point. I really love that shit. But um, the live animation, right? So I'm sure uh, people might remember that the live animation movie came out a long time ago, maybe like 2009, 2010. It was ass. It was super bad. Um, no one fucked with it. Even the creators of, of the Avatar series did not fuck with that movie. They, they like distanced themselves from it. And apparently around that same time, they had already started on this series. But because that movie had like painted such a bad light on, you know, Avatar live action shit that they were like, we got to give it a minute. You know what I mean? So they purposely gave it like literally 10 years, bro. They waited hella long and now they're, uh, you know, they're continuing production and, and like they're starting to release the episodes this shit is so good bro it is super good um i feel like a lot of like productions a lot of movies and shows they focus on profit where this show the actual creators of the original avatar series are very closely um they're like working super close with the actual you know making of everything so you could tell they're focused on the the series you know because I mean? guess what people didn't fall in love with avatar because of they spent $15 on an Avatar toy. No, they fell in love with Avatar because of the story, mm -hmm. because of the uncle, because oh, of... Oh, yeah, it's the story. It's the story is fire. Exactly. It's like people fell in love with, like... The characters, The too. characters and, like, the, the world and everything. So if you are able to portray that correctly and respectfully, people are still going to fuck with it. You know what I mean? And I feel like that's how I felt. Like, uh, as I was watching it, it I, I had this perspective of... Uh, 
if you're a new viewer, you can have that that tension built up of where they, you know, in the first episode, they capture Aang and you're like, oh, no, what are they going to do with him? He just got unfrozen, blah, blah. But like, I, you know, I've already seen the whole series, so I already know he's going to get free and mm-hmm. everything that that's going to happen. But um, even though like that tension for me is like a little bit not there because I know what's going to happen. I know the storyline. It still was there because of how cool it was. You know what I mean? Like, it's one thing to see in the cartoon, like a tense moment but it's another thing to see in live action you know it gives you like a whole other feel and vibe to it and they're making it feel like it also similar similarly shot how it was like edited in the anime like the scene of um suki and uh sokka when they're in the forest and like she's like beating his ass i remember that scene in the like in the anime and it was shot exactly like that like their reactions and their facial expressions i was like exactly it just feels so cool i love it exactly and you you know what else i really fuck with it as well as uh um it's not pg it's like in literally the first scene um i think it's like far far it's not fire uh, fire lord ozai i think it was like so not so i forgot who it was but it was like one of the fire lords grabs like some dude's hand and he's like a firebender and he sets his whole body on fire and like incinerates him and i was like that's sick you know what i mean like it shows death and murder but like in a realistic manner that would happen in that series and it's like unfortunately yes it won't be pg so maybe some some woke parents are like my kid shouldn't watch this I would watch that as a kid, as a yeah. seven-year-old kid. My parents would not know the difference. You know what I mean? They'd be like, "That's a kid's show." You know what I mean? So that I think that that's super cool. I, Riley and I are only um, one and a half episodes in, and it is so good, bro. I'm not gonna lie. There is like, you know, not everything's perfect. Not everything's like when you recreate something original that everyone fucked with it's you're never I feel like you're never gonna exceed the expectations. You're you can get close to it, but it's like imagine making another, you know queen making another one of his like best hits like remaking yeah. it. it's like you're not gonna do it it's like it, it's, not it's already have, been done it's already been done it's yeah. not gonna have the same Im- impact or whatever it is but um there are some corny moments like at first it, it, like i had to uh um it was like uh get used to ang as the main character because at first i was like bro he's talking too quick he's delivering his lines too quick um some of the moments where he should be more serious it feels like he's not serious but that's how he is you know what i mean like it, like looking back on it he is just hella goofy and, you know, ADHD-ish and shit like that. You know yeah. What I mean? And how old is he? He's like nine? You know, he's like 12, 12. I think. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> that's just how a little kid sounds, too. Because I was like, his voice is kind of like annoying, but <laughs> <laughs> he's just a kid. Sokka, perfect. Yeah, I right? agree. Yes. Um, Sakura, right? And no, I not, think not Sakura. That's, that's um, fucking... That's fucking uh, uh, Zuko's also perfect. Zuko he is... He has that energy. Yeah, no, okay, no. The acting is perfect. Physically the wise, no. facial structure, a little different. Yeah, That's he the has first a round thing. face. He has a round face, as in as in Zuko in the anime series. It has, like, a more oval... like Narrow face. Narrow like face you. with, like, a chiseled chin, I guess. Yeah. Pause. <laughs> but... Yeah, Zuko, he has like more of like a round face, but his, um, his vibe is his on point. dude. Yeah, the the line deliveries of some of the most important lines is. Would you say like on one of the lines he delivered? You he delivered. You're like that Zuko. Yeah, yeah. You're I like, was like, yep, yeah, they nailed that one. Yeah. But see, that's the opposite. I feel about the uncle. Like the uncle, he's like. He's not giving what the no, uncle's supposed I to disagree. give to I, me. I disagree. He looks exactly like him, but his vi- like the way he's acting to me is like a little too corny. I wish they would have got a guy who was like actually that. Okay, you see, that I person. don't. I didn't want to keep pausing it and explaining the story to you because um, it's just so much shit to to keep up with. Right? Like from like I'm talking about past, present in the in their series, right? But um the earth kingdom right in like the very beginning of the series like the uh one of the dudes is trying to hand off a note to warn the earth kingdom that the fire nation is going to attack the earth kingdom right they end up not attacking the earth kingdom they end up attacking the air kingdom i sound very nerdy <laughs> right now but um <laughs> it's gonna sound super super nerdy um but basically the uncle he's a part of the fire nation but if you pay attention to everything he does he's always trying to like stifle their their plans you know what yeah I mean? he's like a part of them and he's not trying to do it up like up frontly, like trying to fuck them over. But he's like being a part of the enemy, helping helping the friend. You know what I mean? The whole time, like he's always trying to make their, uh, you know, make yeah. them not progress or or not take over a place or whatever it is. So I feel like his acting is, I think it's on point. I fuck with it. 
And mm. he's supposed to be, he's supposed to be corny. That was his thing in the show. I know, but he was funnier. Like the actor who played him on the show was funnier. I think he's passed away potentially. Maybe I don't know, but I loved him. the dude, he, the um, the uncle's supposed to be a little. It just corny. sounds forced to me, like. No, but you see, like after you watch the whole show, like I'm gonna have some jasmine tea. Like he just feels <laughs> like he's playing him, and I was just like. After you watch the whole show, you're like, oh wow, he's so wisdom filled. It doesn't and feel I, like I, he actually. I, loves I really remember jasmine all... tea. Dude, yes. <laughs> In the anime, I felt like the uncle loved Jasmine T. He's okay, I not feel, giving that. I feel you on that, but I'm telling you, like, <laughs> in the show, there's many a moments where it's kind of like breaking the fourth barrier where the characters in the show, they know he's corny. They know he always is wisdom-filled. So they're yeah. just like, he kind of, like, is that dude who's, you know, uh, um, crying wolf all the Not crying wolf, but he's done it so many times that people don't even pay attention no more. You know what I mean? But then once in a while you pay attention and, like, it hits. You're like, oh, wow, he's right, you know? Yeah. I think he does a good job. I like him. Hopefully he grows on me. But you know what's funny is uh, the co- uh, the um, the costume at first, all the costumes and shit. I, I know I said Sakura, guys. My bad. That has That's fucking Naruto. Uh, uh, that's just me being faded right now. But um, <laughs> the costumes and shit, like the beards and everything. At first I was watching it. I was like questioning myself. I was like, is this corny? I was like, is no. it? It was reminding me of Power Rangers. It's supposed to be like that. Did you watch Power Rangers back in the day? Yes. It, they would have those like weird fake, giant white beards and like I was like I was like is this right or wrong? And then after we were watching, I was like okay, it kind of does look right. And then you commentated on it. I was like okay, I was like I kind of do agree. It, it does look really because it's supposed to. It's I, I don't like now like these like um, live action like remakes of movies where it's like kind of so off like. The vibe of the Alice in Wonderland movie was kind of dark and weird, and it didn't really give me like the same vibe as the cartoon. Yeah, right. Like I, I agree. I like how this one is like so on point, and like the colors are vibrant, dramatic, and it just looks like you're watching the cartoon. Mm-hmm. It always depends on like the director. That's yeah. Like, it depends on the director. That's the one thing I always like forget about is like we always think about movies as like this. It is a huge production where a lot of people are behind it, but. It's always the one director's vision for it. And even, like, in the Harry Potter films, you know what I mean? Like, people to this day, you know, say they're, like, legendary films that, like, I agree, they're really, really good films. But in the Harry Potter universe of people who are really, you know, uh, nerdy about it, they disagree with, like, certain directors' choices. Because mm-hmm. not all the movies are the same director. You know what I mean? Like, the first three, I think, are, like, the OGs that people really fuck with. And then the next three or yeah. four are the ones that people are, they're, like, a hit or miss they like either fuck with them or don't fuck with them which i feel like they should not have done i feel like they should have one director to work on the whole franchise now. i ag- i agree with that but so it gro- they grow with them no but also here's the thing it gets so deep cut it's kind of like it's kind of like having a basketball team where you know you have a player who's good at one thing and you have a player who's good at another thing you can't keep choosing the same player to do the same thing right so um if one if you have one director like attacking the first book which has is supposed oh, to yeah. capture a certain vibe you're like oh riley's perfect right but then if you have the third book where it's supposed to capture more competitive vibe and like that they're, makes sense, they're yeah. older you're like okay this guy would do a better job at this so i feel like that's why they try to do that and at first i agreed with you i was like they should keep the same director for everything but no like as you go through the different books like the first dude might fuck it up for right. the seventh one you know that's true that's true but no, whoever the director is for this, I want to do more research and I want to see it. Do you know how much money they put into this? Bro. Because this is ins- like, it looks so crazy. Dude. Okay, so Riley and I, maybe like a year ago, bought uh, our OLED TV, like that's in our bedroom. And at that point, at that time, it was like, it was expensive, right? But here's the thing when I buy anything like a TV, right? I'm thinking, bro, I'm at least going to spend three, $400. If I'm going to need to upgrade my TV in a year or two or something's going to happen to it because it's low quality in a year or two and I'm going to spend another three, 400 on another low quality TV, I might as well spend the the more amount right now for the, the longevity of it, like lasting um, uh, technical upgrades where it's like it's going to be, you know, 4K is going to last a while or whatever it is. So um, I feel like it's more worth it to spend like the extra bit of money on certain objects, you know items such as a tv especially if you're going to watch it all the time yeah which we really don't you know what i mean so when we got this tv this uh, oled tv at first i was thinking like damn man we spent all this money on this tv and like we don't even watch it but last night we were watching avatar 
And I was like, bro, I kept telling Riley, I'm like, this looks so sick, dude. I was like, it looks so cool. We need to do it with the lights now. Yeah, oh, dude, I'm dude, I'm gonna post on Instagram to to show you guys. We have this like, uh, this light Sensor. setup that you like uh, glue to your TV, and it comes with a camera that films your TV and it replicates whatever colors are on the TV onto the background. It looks super dope. But um, dude, uh, that's what I kept thinking. I was like, bro, the the special effects they put into everything. Um, it was reminding me of Harry Potter where like the reason why people really loved Harry Potter is because you're like submerged into the universe. There's no normal doorknob. There's no normal anything. You don't recognize anything normal in that movie. Everything's custom yeah. made for that movie exactly. and it's like unique to that movie. And that's kind of how like I'm feeling about uh, Avatar. It's but, like watching Disneyland. Like, yeah. <laughs> so but the biggest difference is like... Dramatic. I love it. The biggest difference in, um, is... In Avatar, it's really, really cool, and I really love it, but it's mostly CGI. It's mostly special effects, whereas in Harry Potter, they actually had someone making a fucking, you know, a custom cup, like glass blowing a weird yeah. cup. Like, everything was actually handmade. Not everything, but there was a lot of CGI as well. But a lot of the, you know, I, you know items in the room and shit were actually fucking, you know, um, made for literally one scene mm -hmm. type shit, and that's it. They spent hella money on those movies, and it was worth it in the end, you know? People are still watching them to this day. Yeah, the people love them. Yeah, I'm excited to continue watching it. Really? Mm -hmm. Here's the thing, though. Last night, Riley and I watched maybe 20 minutes, and then I... I oh, call me annoying, but I have to always do this with Riley always. When, when we're watching anything. So annoying. I have to be like, are you awake? Babe, are you awake? <laughs> um, babe, are your eyes open? And Riley, I'm sorry. I don't mean to call you a liar. But when you're sleepy, you're a liar. <laughs> when Riley's sleepy, she's a liar. I've caught her so many times. I'm like, babe, are you uh, are your eyes closed? No, I'm watching. And then I'm like, look at her. And uh, she's fucking drooling, like knocked That's out. That's not true. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, you're knocked out. I I'm like, was. you're not even watching right now. I'm like, why are you lying to me saying your eyes are open? But uh, uh, <laughs> yesterday you were being honest. Yesterday yeah. I, was, I was like, are your eyes closed? You're like, yeah, I'm just resting my eyes. I'm like, okay. I paused. I was like, all right, we're, we're not going to watch this shit. But um, thanks. No, but you know what? Uh, around the time you fell asleep is when I expected you to fall asleep is Riley's not into the fucking. And also I'm not into it uh, as well, but like I'm not, uh, Riley's not into the, the action parts. Yeah, where, the battle scenes. Yeah, the battle scenes where like, th that's where I feel like that's where Marvel's fucking up. Marvel spends all their money and all their attention on the on the karate chops and the laser fucking things and the special effects. No, of, I need character development. Exactly. That's what I'm interested in as well. I don't care for that. Like, I like action scenes in Dragon Ball Z. That's cool to me. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, in animated stuff, it's really, really dope. In real life action, you know, uh, live action shit, it's lame, bro. I want it to be like two minutes. I want it to be three minutes. Less than, to yes, be honest. Bro. That's a little too And I, I agree with you there as well. It's like, it really doesn't look that cool to me. It looks cooler to me on anime than it does like on live action. Yeah. I'd rather watch the character development, the talking, the... the I love the story. The storyline, all you know, uh, uh, developing and all that shit. Yeah, that's <clears> how <throat> I was with Game of Thrones too. Like, the action shit wasn't my interest, but I love the... The drama between all the characters. No, okay, I'm not gonna lie. Game of Thrones did the action good. But you're a guy. You like that stuff. Because it's logistical. It made sense. Like, some, like... Yeah, their shit makes like, sense. Yeah, the, the action scenes, like, you're actually like, whoa, he... He he pushed the arrow down and it shot. You know, like I don't those, know. Those like, those like dramatic like random situations, like the red wedding. Obviously, like those were like the action scenes I love. Obviously, yeah. But just like battle scenes in general, like that go on for minutes. I can't do. <laughs> Regardless, I'm super excited to continue with the this um, Avatar live action shit. I'm I'm happy that. We haven't ran into the last episode yet. I think they... I'm not sure how they released it. Guys, I'm not very, very tapped in, I guess. But uh, we watched episode one. Episode two is immediately available. So I'm wondering at one point we have to wait for another... A new episode. Maybe they release a season at a time. Yeah. I'm not sure if they do that. But I don't... See, this is why I'm wondering how much money is going into this. Is this only going to be like a one season story? No. Or are they going to keep doing <coughs> like all the different chapters? It, I can already tell it's compressed. Because they are such long episodes. So. I can already tell it's compressed because uh, with even with Avatar, there's a lot of other animes like this as well where there's those certain episodes that are story developing episodes. This is when point A goes to point B. But then in between those episodes are 
little throwaway episodes where fucking, you know, Goku learns how to drive or fucking, you know, some random shit, which is interesting. They're classic episodes, but they don't actually develop the story. The filler. And whatever happens in it doesn't really happen along with the storyline afterwards. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So Avatar The Last Airbender uh, animated series had a bunch of those. Uh, and I, like we're already on like episode one and a half. And I already can tell that we've it, they're compressing the fuck out of it into just the main story plots. What I'm wondering is, uh, I didn't even think about it until you said it right now, but if they do it until the last episode between the Battle of Aang and uh, Fire Lord Sozin, or no, uh, um, I, guys, I forgot. Dude, I'm a stoner, bro. Don't fucking, don't call me a fake <laughs> fan because I don't remember the names, bro. But on the last battle between uh, Aang and the Fire Lord, that battle scene, I don't know how the fuck they're going to recreate that shit. That shit is epic. That's when you were falling asleep hella during the animated thing. And I was like, I was watching it like, bro, this is so dope. And you were fucking knocked <laughs> out and shit. But those are those are the dopest battle scenes when he would have like an air bubble water around him, rocks floating around him, fire. And he was like using all four elements at once. Bro, that shit was dope as hell. I don't know how they were going to recreate that. They're probably going to spend all their CGI budget on that one thing, to be honest. Yeah. If they want to make it right, because it's like they're supposed to be in a a battlefield full of uh these like pillar rocks, bro. I don't know how they would recreate that, dude. That shit's insane. People are crazy, bro, with that with their animation skills nowadays. I know. It's like, damn, we've come a long way. Like, I feel like sometimes people forget. Like, you always think like, oh, big corporation, big company making this film. No, it's like, yes, it is. They have a lot of money behind it, but. It's it's literally some guy sitting at home with a mouse and a keyboard, maybe three keyboards, <laughs> but like a mouse and a keyboard, um, editing this shit, dude. And it's probably a team of guys, not just one guy, but it's, it's some it. dude pulling pulling 10-hour shifts, 12-hour shifts, editing all day. Well, it took them so long to make this because we've been waiting for like, it got announced like two years ago. It got uh, announced a while ago, and they've had already filmed it, and I remember, lo- like two years ago, I think. No, they filmed it a long. Uh, the article I I read a lo- uh, like maybe three years ago, four years ago. It said that they had they had already started on this concept many many years ago, but then the live action got released. Um, the live action was originally, I think, the creators of the Avatar were like originally um involved in it, and then they were like. Oh, they're not listening to us. They're not listening to us at all. So they're like, we're, they're gonna ruin our image. You know what I mean? Like our our uh, our uh, image of what Avatar is supposed to be. So they like took uh, they they uh, canceled their partnership with it. You know what I mean? So yeah. the creators of Avatar with the original live creation were like, we're out. It became ass because it was fucking ass. And then um and I heard they they were already working on this new series, but they took a long ass break because you can't release the the, the Yuri movie that's ass. And then the Yuri movie that's great under a different production company, but people are still going to remember the fucking Yuri ass movie yeah. first. You know what I mean? So you have to wait like 10 years or some shit. So that's what I heard. Hmm. But this animation looks so new. So I don't think they yeah. worked on this 10 years ago. Right? No, I, I don't, don't think know. so. No way. I have no idea. But regardless, it is super dope. I recommend people watch it. But also, this will be short, guys. As for watching stuff, we officially have caught up with all the traders that are available on Peacock, that, that are available on Peacock, we watched the traders um, Australia, we watched the traders UK, and we watched uh, the traders America season one, and we're watching the traders America season two. But it's uh, the new episode comes out every Thursday, so every Thursday we get to do reconnected, and then after reconnected, we come home and watch the new episode. It's literally my highlight. <laughs> yes, exactly, um, bro. That shit is so interesting and I, it's so interesting to see everybody's different like every group makes it so different mm-hmm. like even if they're doing like similar challenges or games like all the different personalities make every season a new like game yes, too exactly guys uh I, i've <clears throat> um you know to, to some people that might not know what we're talking uh, riley and i are talking about it's like this game show um that's like a reality tv show where they have 20 to uh, 20 to 24 people they choose Two people to be usually like two to three people, uh, two to three people to be the traders, and the traders basically have to like lie to everyone, tell them they're not the traders, tell them they're innocent, and the whole group's uh, initiative or like the goal of the whole group is to find out who the traders are and eliminate them. And um, every season, like they can win a quarter million dollars, basically mm-hmm. two hundred fifty thousand dollars. And the whole goal is to find out who the traders are, and the traders' goal is to like 
be friends with everyone and be normal and act like they're innocent, but actually, you know, be lying to everyone the whole time. It sounds, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, you know, this might not be a great idea, bro. If you watch what well, Riley and I have seen, it's so interesting. Um, I think it's in the Australia season that we just watched. Um, like I said, it starts with like 24 people. When you have 24 people, it's easy to find the one person that you don't really talk to and be like, yeah, it's Joe. Joe's the traitor. Yeah. I don't really talk to Joe. Let's vote for him today, right? But then once the group gets compressed down to like four or five people and every single person in the group you actually you know you know you know you know you remember their name and like you're friends with them all that stuff it's hard to be like fuck which one is, is it Ri- is riley the traitor like we're really good friends i think she has a crush on me like uh like could she be the traitor is she like playing a trick on me who knows um and every uh every episode they have to have like a, a table talk where they have to vote for one person who they think is the traitor even if it might be their friend and at one point in the Australia season, this one dude is like, listen, at the table talk, he's like, listen, guys, he's like, I put this on my mother's life. He's like, I swear on my mom's mm-hmm. life. I'm not a traitor. He's like, I'm innocent. They voted him out, bro. And then he literally voted. was like, he was like on stage. They're like, uh, and like right before you get voted out, the host is like, all right, you know, right before you leave, he's like, tell everyone if you really are a traitor or innocent. And he's like, guys, he's like, I've fucking swore on my mom's life <laughs> i felt so Bro. bad he was like i'm gonna get my girl an engagement ring i'm Bro. gonna give the other rest of my money to my parents i was like oh my and he was so he Bro. was like the like light of the like the season in two like he was so funny like to, like i feel like i don't explain it that well but if you watch also there was two traitors in the group of four so they all voted him out because they like manipulated the other faithful to like believe that they were faithful oh my Dude. god it was just crazy <laughs> It was so bad. It's like, I feel like I don't explain it well, but if you watch it and you watch these, like, these people who are, like, put in these situations where they're, like, they're actually an innocent person and they're, like, everyone thinks that they're being sus just because, like, they, you know, fuck up their words or, like, you know, maybe have a crooked tooth or something like that. Like, literally the first lady to get voted out had a missing hand. And she's like, I want to win this quarter million dollars so I can buy myself a new hand. The most humble, just this fucking... You know, she needed the money the most out of everyone else. Was like, I want to buy a house and shit. Mm-hmm. She was like, I need a new arm. They voted her out first, probably because she was missing an arm. And she, there, everyone's like, you know, I don't trust her. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, it was so like that. Like that. That shows. That shows so funny. It's one thing to meet someone, guys, like on camera and be like, hello, what's your name, blah blah. It's another thing to have someone on camera for three and a half days, where they're like building friendships with new people they never met before and then also you don't know if they're like lying to you or not exactly. you know the whole time also about the swearing thing i guess now they made a new rule where you can't swear on anything like that you're a faithful or any yeah you can't oh. swear that you're a faithful because p- people are gonna obviously get persuaded like that yeah, and yeah. that's because I guess um, that little British guy who's on the U.S. season little right now. Little British guy? He is like the little British guy. I don't know who you're talking about. John from the season the no, season we're watching yeah, right now. Yeah. He was like, I guess everybody knew that he he was faithful because he's like, I swear on every single one of my children that I'm a faithful. And they didn't show it on the TV. Oh, my God. And also the guy who got edited out in the Australia season, Paul. Yes. There was a reason why he was edited out. I guess, like, he was, like, horrible on camera and, like, would do, like, um, Austin Powers impersonations and they couldn't use any of his scenes. Oh, my God, bro. <laughs> we were watching the season and every single person gets an intro where they show they show Yuri on camera for the first time. They're like, this is Yuri. He's a live streamer from Hollywood. And then, like, I'm just like, hey, guys, you know, can I get some toast? And then Riley walks in and... And they're like, this is Riley, blah, blah, blah. She's, you know, a hairstylist from, you know, the Bay Area, blah, blah. They have an intro for every single person. Riley and I are like 10 episodes deep. And then randomly, we just see this one dude who's a part of the group. And I'm like, we're like, who the fuck is this guy, dude? They never didn't even, they never even made an intro for this fool. And he was a part of the show, like, till like one of the last episodes. Yeah, he was like there <laughs> the whole time. And we were like, dude, what the fuck happened? We're like, uh, they never even made an intro for this fool. But apparently, like Riley said, like he was just really awkward on camera. So they, <laughs> they, they didn't make anything so out of him. So they never even included him, Oh bro. my God. But like it was. Oh, and I guess he kept talking about like pr- production on camera, like oh, the behind the scenes yeah, while yeah, he was yeah. getting videotaped. I don't know. <laughs> it's that so, was so funny, though. Yeah, it really is funny. But uh, one of the ladies, um, it was a Phaedra, like one of the winners, uh, uh, people who, uh, one of the winners, like people who won. Hold on. <laughs> Bless you. 
she apparently like when she won i'm not sure if it was phaedra or not. it was like one of the uh, ladies who like won one of the seasons when she won a bunch of the other contestants were really mad at her oh, because Suri. because apparently oh, Suri, because apparently like in private conversations she would like talk to someone and she'd be like she would she would swear on her kids and she would like bring her kids and her family involved and she'd be like you know, like, oh, my daughter, like, you know, I'm, I'm not I'm not a traitor, blah, blah. And, like, it wasn't on camera, but apparently in private conversation, she had swore to numerous people, right? That, like, on family shit that she was not a traitor. And she ended up being the one and only winner. She, like, lied to every single person. Um, and one of the, uh, one of, like, uh, she was in, like, the top three. Or, like, uh, there was, like, a top three. And the um, she was the one and only trader, and the other two people believed that she was not a trader, and like they were the ones that were the most heated at her because they were like, "You were talking about family and shit. Like, how could how could you lie to us?" One of the uh, people was this like chick who was a uh, she was like a dyke who uh, was like in a lesbian relationship, and she was saying, "I need the money to uh, you know start a family." All like she like really needed the money for some some serious shit, mm. and. If I was like in the top three with her, I would have at least split the money. I know one third, and they asked the lady like, uh, "What was her name again?" Um, Suri. Suri. They're like, "Did you e- even like give give them like ten thousand, twenty thousand out like, of it wasn't that much money out of your quarter million?" And she's like, "No." She's like, "I didn't even think about it." I was like, like Bro, "I really didn't think about it. It the, wasn't that much money." I was like, oh "It my. wasn't that much money." Okay, yeah. Who gets a quarter million dollars in a, in in fucking in a week? How long are they there for a month? Yeah. Who who makes a quarter million dollars in a month? See, it, it is the sad part when the trader wins and they, the faithful are just sitting there, and they're just like, "Fuck!" Like, because you make it to the end. Yeah, you're like, you're like, and then you can't feel happy. And it's also, so the, weird. when you make it to the end, they're like, they're there holding a champagne glass and a tuxedo. They're like, they feel like they're about to get a check, and then they're like, "Oh, actually, you lost." <laughs> and you're like, you get nothing. You're like, what the fuck this shit? You're like, I'm out of here, dude. <laughs> yeah, the Australian one was like this beautiful model and like this older man and like she was like crying to him like saying like i'm a faithful like i promise you blah 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 and like they like i said there was two traders at that table so they got out the other trader and he's like yes we did it we did it and like she's just sitting there and then the host is like okay now you guys have to announce if you're a trader or you're faithful yeah he's like i'm a faithful 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 he's like so happy so proud and she's like Craig, I'm sorry, but I'm a traitor. And he's just like... Bro, his face died. Died. Like, it was so sad. And he's like, that's the game, right? Bro. And he just, like, left. It was so sad. It was even more sad because that dude that Riley's talking about was, like, this older guy who had made two best friends in the in the in the in the game and both of his best friends were traitors where he's like on his on the first dude like who was his best friend was like this other older guy and he's like crying. He's like He's like, I don't want to vote for you, bro. He's like, I think it's you, though. And he, like, drops the vote, and he ends up being the traitor. He's, like, crying and shit because he's like, I can't believe my homie was lying to me I this know. whole time. I and then so his bad. other good homie was his chick, and then she lies to him, too. It's so funny, bro. But so how bad. do you cast, like, my question is, like, you know, I want to recreate this as well, but, like, casting agencies, they're not just some rinky-dink no. finding people. Like, they no. have a talent of finding people who are the most sensitive, crazy fucking people who are gonna have the craziest re- like I don't know how they cast people or like what um uh like system they use to like fi- like find specific people, but bro, they applicants they do it so good, bro. And like they literally interview hundreds of people. Yeah. And they're like this they this person's it. You know, like Jersey Shore. Like every single person they picked oh, was yeah. like fucking hilarious you're like how the fuck do you pick these people you know what i mean and some seasons are better than others and wait but th- have you ever seen the jersey shore uh casting tapes no where it's like Polly d and all of them like like i love watching pl- casting like tapes, please though. get me on the show blah blah they're so different on the casting tapes than they are on the show i know so it shows you that the the directors or whoever they are that like is casting the people they already know like these are my plans of what's going to happen, and this is how this person's going to react to these situations. Perfect. Let's exactly. choose Riley. Like, so, like, uh, on some of the casting tapes I saw, who's not Pauly D? Who's like the young Italian guy on there? Vinny. Vinny. Yeah. So Vinny, his casting tape is ass, bro. He's like, hey, my name's Vinny. Like, it's like super ass. Like, and then you're like, how did they cast this fool? And then he kind of does make they sense know. on the show you know yeah like, sometimes you have like the boring person like that's maybe not the most exciting person yeah and like 
their story unfolds like look at Bergie. like Bergie is not the typical person that would be on love island and he was like the most beloved person yeah. and look he, now he's on another show shout out to Bergie. he's the reason why we're watching mm-hmm. um the traders but shout you out should to- really ask him to, to come on he would i feel we like. would we have to have paul or nelly on we for sure maybe you and Tok should do it we wouldn't we can't have Bergy on without without having paul lord here because he nicknamed him muddy but um uh like uh, i'm not sure if, yeah, who knows about Bergy here but Bergy is like literally like the most awkward um righteous moral guy he's like i think he's like he might be mormon like type shit you know what i mean but they put him on that love show <laughs> uh, <laughs> they put him on that love show love island and, you know, everyone on there is promiscuous. They're trying to kiss. They're trying to fuck. They're all like, they got fucking steroids. Or they got BBLs. And he's the one dude there who's like, just like normal flat chested freckles. He's just like, I'm here. I'm Bergy. <laughs> like, and he like makes it to the end, bro. He like, made it to the end. <laughs> he's super funny, bro. But uh, like, yeah, those are the people you just got to like learn to cast. You're like, okay, this is a person that's not going to fucking get too emotional and cry and leave. Mm-hmm. But you know they'll be able to uh, take the punches and make it to the end relatable but, too yeah and um bergy like you know like i said he got he got played numerous times like like i think two or three girls were like they were on their way to getting eliminated and he, and he was you know for sure safe so they're like let me pretend to like bergy so i can stay in this game and he like damn near fell in love with like two three girls and then he was just like damn i thought she really liked me i know that was so sad. but you like <laughs> loved seeing his story because then he ended up with some girl what there. was her name taylor taylor he's still with her right mm-hmm. wow what's fucked up is uh okay sorry to bring you back to love island but just a little memory is bergy finally finds this girl taylor that he likes right and then they they do this scene where they bring on the family members via facetime <laughs> so the family so members can be like you know like hyping up their kids be like good job good job son like you know i've been watching keep going like you can win this money and they bring on Bergy's family or like his grandparents because I guess he's like an orphan or something like that. Or he's like his parents aren't around. And his grandparents are like, we ain't fucking with Taylor. <laughs> they're like, she seems fake <laughs> or some shit like that. Oh, yeah, they're like, we just don't think she's genuine or something like that. I was like, damn, that's fucked up. And I'm, she was like the nicest one. I know, one. she's literally like the nicest <laughs> one. His grandparents are like, nah, we ain't fucking with Taylor. <laughs> Right, yeah, I felt I, so bad. I really have to go use the bathroom, so um, can you take over for yeah, a second? Yeah, I'll read the chat. Yeah. All right, guys, I'm going to go use the bathroom. I'll be back in one second. BRB. W. Blackley for rolling up that prism right now. So Let's I think go. we did roll up the black cherry earlier. That's what so I this is the prism right here. Because I didn't see the bag. What's up, y'all? Hi, who cares? Yep, bathroom break. No, not that kind of bathroom break. Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> oh, really? Um, anyone else see what? What happened? I have not seen anything. <gasps> Shout out, Kayla. What's up, rich gang? no um love talk show subjects please sorry y'all we're wrapping that up i'm so confused what you're you guys are talking about y'all made me want to watch avatar yes who cares you should watch it dude it's so good and honestly like usually with remakes and stuff like that Ooh, oh shit. that was close I, I would usually tell people like, oh, watch the original first, watch the original first. But if you don't like animes, not everyone likes watching cartoons, not everyone likes watching animes. If you don't like want, uh, watching animes and you don't want to, and you know, Avatar The Last Airbender is kind of like a long series to get into. If you don't want to get into that, I would recommend to watch it first though, because it's better. It's the OG. But if you don't want to, that is going to, I feel like it's going to do it. I really like the animated series the story is just really good and cute and but he, it's it's fun to watch it's not like super serious so like it's a good cute story with a lot of character development like we were saying mm-hmm. you know it's not all action like some animes i think is all action like dragon ball z and yeah. stuff like that you know no facts dude i <laughs> babe 
I remember um, back in the day when I was a kid in like elementary school, Dragon Ball Z was coming out one episode at a time every week. Once a week, there was a new episode, right? So that was the day I was like getting my popcorn out, getting super ready for the new episode. And uh, there Wait, I think there might be F in there, sorry. Oh, it's fine, it's fine. Um, and then um, at one point there was the, the Goku versus Frieza battle, right? Where Goku finally meets Frieza, they're finally going to fight. That battle scene lasted four episodes and some of the episodes like literally some of the episodes was just them like staring at each other oh hell it would be like it would be like uh maybe 10 second clip of goku like just flying staring at frieza and then another clip of frieza staring at goku and like literally like half the episode passes by they haven't even said a word yet (laughs) they're just like staring at each other the whole episode finishes you're like damn i got i gotta watch another uh wait till the next week and then next week comes around they like throw a single punch and then like gotta wait till the next week. I'm like over exaggerating, but I remember during that uh that like specific fight, it was like every week I was waiting, and it was it, that one fight took so long, bro. But I was hyped on it because like I love that shit, you know. You would have not, you would have been out. You would have been like, bro, four episodes of fighting. Yeah, I was more not. of a Hannah Montana sweet life. I was That's watching that Raven. too type of girl i was watching hannah montana but well. that they always had reruns on disney channel but also like that was such a thing waiting for like the new episode next week oh we're yeah, now yeah. like everything's kind of like out at once but, except for traders traders we have to wait a week but what sucks about hannah montana it, like it kind of was but it, hannah montana and like stuff like that like the disney shit was like 90 percent filler where there was some story plot you no know I mean? oh well some it, of them were ned's random. declassified was good because it was like 50 percent story plot ned's 50, was so 50 percent mix you know what i mean who knows they were like you know uh, what's your name was topping up uh, topping off everyone in the oh, shit. behind Mose? the scenes yeah moses uh, what moes right yeah who, Mosley. Who knows? Who knew Mosley was fucking topping off for everyone no, behind Mose. the scenes? Isn't it just Mose? Mose? Mosley? I don't know. Mr. Dude. Mosby. Mr. Mose? <laughs> dude, not Mr. Know. Mosby. I know, but Miss <laughs> Mose is from Sweet Life. Or Ned's. God damn. Regardless, Ned's Declassified has like a podcast now where like the three main people have, you know, uh, they do a podcast where they talk about their experiences. And Mose or Mosley or Mosby or Moses, whatever her name is, she's crazy, bro. Like she's talking about like. Remember when I sucked your dick behind the scenes? Or, or, <laughs> and Ned's like, just like, what? Bro. And He's I'll, like, flushed. And that's why I, 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 you know, I hate, you know, I know you hate when I bring up hypothetical questions, babe. I'm sorry. But that's where I have to like really try to put myself in the perspective of like, imagine I was Ned. You know what I mean? Like, you know, I was on a, I was on the show when I was younger and then, Bruh. and then I do this podcast now and then I'm in a relationship, you know, now it's been years since this is show. I'm in a relationship now and for some extra bread, it's like some actual good, you know, revenue. I'm like doing this podcast with my old co-host and then my old co-host from 15 years ago says, remember when I sucked your dick? <laughs> How well, would you, like how would you react like you would be like that co-host wa- is literally crazy. Would like, you she, want me doing that podcast after that? You would be like, don't ever go back there again, dude. Well, like, I could tell that he's obviously so uncomfortable yeah, and he, like he's not into it at all. So that's <laughs> see, that's the shit that doesn't bother me. Like that's she's off. Like every time she says some crazy shit, I'm just like, what the fuck is going through her mind right now? She's <laughs> she says some out of pocket shit, bro, for real. Oh I feel like we would. God. I would have been best friends with her in high school. Really? Like she just seems like, like my. I'm ad- sure you would. <laughs> not because of that. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Why? Because of how like how like her attitude towards life seems like how I was in high school, which is just like fuck it, whatever, dude. You know, like like she's. Oh my god. Interesting. I'm not giving head behind the scenes. Of I hope class. not. God Jesus damn. Christ, bro. Oh my god. Never mind, dude. But the. Their podcast is funny as hell because a lot it of it is hell of funny. I, I forgot who made this video, but someone did a a review video of what's the word name for it of those types of podcasts, like bring back podcasts or recap recap podcast. I'm not well, sure. If, I'm not sure if it's recap podcast, but there's a lot of podcasts out there nowadays where it's like that '70s show comes back. Yeah, or, like with all their hosts with all or the, all their old characters. Well, they try their best. You know, what I mean? to like, get like, their best characters. Yeah, their best characters. But like, there'll be a lot of old shows that'll come back to do a podcast now. And someone someone did make a review video of all of the the like I guess you can call them like the bring back podcast or the you know recap podcast. And Ned's declassified. He did give him like one of the best 
votes, you know, or scores because they're like they're not PG. They're not yeah, they're I not, love it. They're it's not funny. just talking about like some like, oh yeah, remember those lines from back in the day? Like she's literally saying they're like, telling what they were doing behind yeah, the scenes <laughs> she's literally saying remember losing your virginity to me <laughs> and we're like watching this wholesome like little kid show bro cookie no actually there was some innuendos cookie is funny shit. as hell because like whenever, cookie's so funny because like whenever like she says some out-of-pocket shit cookie's just in the background He's like, like oh like you can tell on his face like he knows but he just doesn't say anything He's just like, like <laughs> imagine what cookie has to actually say about what he's seen Bruh. <laughs> I feel like he keeps it to himself. Like Ned also is like in the predicament of like, bro, I can't believe she's talking about this the whole time. But he's just trying to talk about some other shit. But also Ned is all like I can tell Ned is like on this like he's trying to flex how bad of a kid he used to be. I know. I can tell because like I think people think he's so nerdy that he has to overcompensate and be like, I've been locked up before. Remember when I got a DUI guy? Like, he has to, like, overcompensate and, like, tell people he's done shit. And I went to the drunk tank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he was like, it was, like, really cold in there. <laughs> I'm just like, okay, bro. Like, relax. But that show does have their three main characters, so. Good yeah, for, exactly. Good for them. But it is funny to watch, like, when they had Coconut Head on. I forgot. That was iconic. In that review video on YouTube, I forgot what show, uh, what, like, review podcast um, they were, um talking about but it was like the show from back in the day like early 2000s no it was a uh, um w wizards of waverly place and the podcast is hosted by like these two characters that had like like basically like one line no harper was <laughs> like a main character i feel like she was her best friend and uh, but the dad was like random yeah that's like, random i just remember the characters like they chose for the wizards of waverly place podcast i'm like no one even knows who these people are bro like and these are the podcast hosts of the of, of, i guess whatever fuck it it makes sense um wait also really quick guys i forgot to bring this up number one we didn't go to the p.o box I know. Um, so, guys, next week we will be going to the P.O. Box. If you guys want to send us literally anything, our P.O. Box address is P.O. Box 11535, Burbank, California, um, 91510. If you guys um, need the address, it's, it's uh, in the description as well. But also, I want to bring this up. Guys, shout out to Dr. Dabber, bro. What the fuck? This is sick as hell, man. So this is a whole dabbing device. It's kind of like, it looks like a bubbler. And also, as I was talking to them, they were telling me that, like, the chamber is made out of quartz um, compared to other, like, you know, portable uh, dabbing devices or whatever it is. So I haven't even opened this yet. It's still in the plastic. I think I'm going to open this up maybe later tonight on Kick. I think that we will we will get another uh, late night stream as well today, potentially. But, maybe. um... um I think I do want to, yeah, I'm going to open this, uh, not I think, but I'm going to open this up and test this out on stream, I think on kick, uh, kick.com slash harmony series, probably tonight or tomorrow for sure. Shout out to Dr. Uh, Dr. Dabber for hooking us up uh, with this thing right here, bro. Thank you guys so much. And also, uh, once again, guys, apologies to anyone's, uh, anyone that did send, uh, send us anything to the PO box. We'll, um, we'll open it up next week for sure. We just forgot to. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'll go check that out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Anywho. Okay. Guys. First thing, I can't bring up any of the the topics on screen. I'll fix fix that. I'll fix that for next week. Fix that. Um, but first thing we have on the news is Wendy Williams reportedly diagnosed with front front temp front temporal dementia and aphasia or aphasia. So front temporal, I'm guessing that's the front of your head. Uh, dementia and aphasia. So one thing in life, guys, I realized is like I feel like. Even if it's even if it's some guy who's done you so dirty in life, or not even guy, like any person who's done you so dirty in life, like some person you can like, you know, people say hating is a bad thing. You should never hate anyone because yeah. hating someone is like drinking poison tea and expecting them to get sick. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it's like you're hurting yourself. So you should never hate anyone. You should never, and also along with that, I feel like you should never with wish with mm -hmm. uh, wish uh, sickness or like you know any bad luck on anyone. You know what I mean? Like. I, I don't think you should really do that. I feel like you should just keep to yourself. But also, I don't think it's against the rules to not have sympathy for anyone. You know what I mean? Specifically. Because at least in the research I've done or I've uh, just randomly came across, Wendy Williams is a demon. Yeah, she is. She is a demon witch, bro. But also, I don't know, like, maybe uh, mental health issues, sometimes, like, they happen overnight. And sometimes they, like progress slowly and get worse 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 to a point that it's like there's no normal you know yuri anymore type yeah. shit so 
maybe the reason why she was so ruthless back in the day is because she was dealing with this like inability to fucking use her brain to 100% where she can actually feel sympathy for people because she's been she's exposed people's cancer uh you know cancers where people wanted to be private about having cancer she's yeah. exposed that before exposed relationships like that didn't want like she's done a lot of there's many many examples of her like, exposing and and just being kind of like a cruel person to people for yeah. no reason you know people hate her seriously <laughs> she's she's definitely ruthless yeah it's just crazy like any kind of illness like that where you just slowly forget everything is really scary to deal with what was that one actor i told you that has dementia now bruce um, willis bruce willis like that's it's so sad i did see something about like you know some documentary or i think I, maybe it was a patrick cc video about like how bruce willis might be like a rude guy or something like that like on on screen or something like that but apparently yeah bruce willis is dealing with dementia right now and uh if you go to his instagram he kind of looks they don't really talk about it too much they just show like normal photos of him like they don't really mention it too many times but if you go through the comment section people are you know commentate on it and um a lot of people are, are like in the comments section do say like oh their family members are going through and how serious it is and how like it is it's you know it's like how do you deal with that it's like it requires 24 7 surveillance mm -hmm. you know what i mean and then even then they might not, you know, understand, like, what's happening in the situation, freak out, have anxiety, like, have a panic attack, get scared, or something, like, I don't know, it's, like, a lot to deal with, you know what I mean, so, yeah. and that's where it's, like, you can't really wish that on anyone, because that's a f fucked up thing to deal with, but, goddamn, she was rude when she had, a uh, ability of, you know, understanding what she was doing. Yeah, still her clips that I saw today for her new reality show, which I didn't know she was doing i didn't know she was doing a reality show the one clip you showed me i feel like it's so fucked up bro like she's literally in there like she's i like, know she doesn't even know what she's saying that's what i'm saying and like why is this camera they're including on her? this yeah they're, they're putting a camera on her and a mic on her when right now she doesn't even know what she's saying yeah and they're profiting from it you know it's lifetime dude they're doing the gypsy rose shit too they're about to do a gypsy rose tv series that's so strange like so weird yeah. i was like i felt uneasy about it too i was like she looks obviously out of it yeah. in her fucking bed like and there's a whole tv production and you guys are just i don't know that's what's like that's what i think about too like with the bruce um when i thought about the bruce willis situation and the wendy williams situation is like it's crazy to like accomplish so many things in your life you know what i mean like you're such a successful person have like a lot of fans and you know people who fuck with you and have seen your work and then you get to a point where you, you don't even understand what's going on and you can't even appreciate your life's work. You know what I mean? Like, you're just lost. Like, that's... You're basically kind of, like, not even there. You know what I mean? Like, oh, yeah. anymore. You're Like, in a way, you've already died. Slowly, yeah. I forgot, so I, I forgot what the quote was. Some actor or someone has, like, some quote where, like, they said... I, oh, I think it was Robin Williams or some shit where he said, like, the thing that's worse than death is, like... Or, you know, having a friend die is, like, having them, you know die as the person you knew them you know what i mean like where you can have a relationship with someone in one mind state and then they could completely flip you know what i mean like and you know either go crazy or turn yeah and then that person that you knew them as is dead you know what i mean like that's it they're no no longer gonna exist even though the person the human body exists like that mental phase is not gonna be there no more yeah that's crazy I know. technically uh we've died already too you know what i mean like think about 10 year old riley she's not gonna be here no more okay <laughs> you know what I mean? like, yeah. that's true it, it, yeah. even like i uh I, I saw something in like pe class a long time ago like it says that your skeletal system is like made of cells and all you know your cells are constantly dying and you know rebirthing and shit so uh uh every 10 years basically around around the every 10 year mark your cells have completely you know rebirth like so like there's not a single cell left from the age of one by the age of 12 you know what i mean so yeah. like I'm uh, 29 right now, so I've already gone through, like, two fully different skeletal systems. I'm on my third, <laughs> Te <laughs> technically. Okay, lizard ass. <laughs> so I've already died twice, skeletally-wise. Skin-wise, you die every day. You know what I mean? Like, you're always, like, losing cells and shit. I don't know. Is, are we getting too deep Okay, here? science. I hate. <laughs> I literally hate science. Really, dude? I do. All right. Um, okay. <laughs> Why this pose? I can't show you guys this, but Poetic Flacco posted this post that says, it's titled, 
Lil Meech, and I'm not sure who you know Lil Meech is, but it's not important. Um, Lil Meech is going viral for letting another man braid his hair, right? Because he posted a video of, you know, of him, like a selfie video of some guy braiding his hair. In my mind, this is an example of guys just do it better than girls. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> You no. can't you can't send a woman to do a man's job. Shut up. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Girls have smaller fingers, so they're gonna get better braids. Guys have more strength, so they get tighter braids. Mm -mm. It's about girl, finger dexterity. Babe. Girls are gonna get loose ass braids. Because the they're fuck like, oh, it's, okay. my hands can't. You need to stop talking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm kidding. Move do you, on. Do but you... that pose is crazy. The mirror selfie. Do you ever think I'm, like, actually being sexist? Yeah, all the time. Really? Mm-hmm. Honestly. Yes. You are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. But here's the thing, though. You act like you're kidding, but you're not. No, I am kidding. But you're here, such a But here's the thing, uh, though, is guys, and it's true. This is not, like, some fucking red-pilled weird... Uh, guys can be called idiots, stupid, you know, fucking... Uh, the guys are all just dogs. But, like, guys can be called all types of shit oh all day, every day. No God. one cares. Someone says that, you know, a dude can bra braid hair better than a girl. It's like, you're being sexist. You're getting sensitive that people are calling guys dogs and stuff? Oh, really, mm -hmm. dude? Why? Really? Yeah, you that you're being sensitive about that? No, I'm not being sensitive. It doesn't apply to you. I'm not a dog. Yeah, exactly. So it shouldn't apply to you. So why do you care? Oh, my God. Okay. I don't care. <laughs> All right, guys. This is something I brought up on uh, Reconnected, but I didn't get it right. Now we actually have the post. Shout out to Ewan Hartful. Ewan Hartful posted something uh, on Instagram. It's titled, One... Okay, it's an option, right? One has to leave LA. If you if you were to kick out one of these corporations from Los Angeles permanently, which one of them would be? Would it be In and Out, Tommy's uh, original Tommy's uh, old famous burgers, uh, Taco El Gavilan, or King Taco? I've never had the bottom two. You never had the bottom two? Mm. Okay, so you really like can't tell. Well, which out of the top two? Kick out Tommy's, I'm assuming. Yeah, kick out Tommy's. At forever. Yeah. You don't even care. Well, I don't know. The bottom two, I would have to try. But well, out of the top two, for sure, yeah. I'm going in and out over Tommy's. Okay, so in LA, King Tommy's Taco. Is too much. I've heard the King Taco just has a lore behind it. I don't know what it is, dude. Like, since fucking. What's the lore? I don't know. Like, I don't know what it is. Since, like, middle school or high school, I've always heard, we're going to King Taco. I'm, you know, the weekend at King Taco. Like, people, I just always, <laughs> I always hear King Taco shit. Like, <laughs> references, you know? What? <laughs> I the always, week in the King Taco is random. I always hear stuff about King what Taco. What is going down? Um, I went there. Is that code word? That's probably code. It's just a restaurant. King Taco. No, it's just a. <laughs> it's just a restaurant. But uh, I uh, sounds at, sus. At one point, I like um, I lived like next to a King Taco like for like three months, and I went there. I went there like two, three times. And it was okay. You know what I mean? Like, it was all right. It wasn't, like, anything uh, spectacular. It was, like, all right food. Like, it was, to me, because I heard it my whole life, King Taco, King Taco, I was, like, <laughs> I was like, oh, it must be fucking busting. It must be so fire. Finally went there. I was, like, oh, okay. It's, like, perfectly mediocre. You know, it's, like, not to talk shit, but it's, like, all right. Um, tacos El Gavilan. I hate Tacos El Gavilan, specifically because of the fucking one they have in Hollywood, bro. They brought the Tacos El Gavilan in Hollywood, babe. It's a taco. It's a taco place where like an indoor. I think we've gone there maybe once, but it's an mm -hmm. indoor. Okay, never mind. It's an indoor taco place where you go there, you order maybe I don't know. Fucking I've seen it. Carne asada tacos. <laughs> they give you the tacos with no uh toppings, right? It's just the meat, and then they have like a buffet type section where you add the toppings yourself, right? Because that one is located, number one, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna have my toppings myself. I'd rather have them like pre grilled, saturated in juices, all that stuff. Like, I, it's better when they do it themselves, in my opinion. Number two, uh, that's number one. Number two is that one in Hollywood, bro, like, you'll find band aids in that shit. Like, bro, there's homeless people and they're Ew. fucking grabbing onions, like eating like little specks of onions. Real quick. That one's gross. hella sus, bro. I've been there hella times. I've had be terrible experiences there. I've had like maybe one or two good experiences. I don't fuck with Tacos of Gavilan. I think. Ew. You can get rid of Tacos Little Gavilan, bro. I don't fuck with it at all. Tommy's, I love Tommy's. It's okay. It's not okay. I guess. All right, no, I agree with you. It's okay, but it's a little too heavy. 
Yeah, okay. I'm not trying to eat it every day, but once in a blue it's moon. it's once in a blue moon. It's like you're like I want Tommy's, and it's so good, bro. They're chili. Their chili might have a band aid in it as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down though. It's so finger. it's so good, bro. That shit, that shit okay. that shit's hella fire. Um, no, just, just go, wait. wait. Oh wait, because we have one, only one more now. Um, yeah, but then I have wait. Hold on. Uh, I have some others. Oh, you, you should go to use the bathroom. I'll talk about this really quick, guys. Little update for um, what's going to happen tomorrow. So today's Sunday. Tomorrow's Monday, obviously. That's how the world works. Um, on Monday, I'm finally, we're finally going to do it. Um, the last time I like double checked was like two days ago, but I'm pretty sure he's still, he's still, uh, you know, down for this shit, guys. I'm gonna link up with India's only. I've I met India's only like uh, maybe around uh, six months ago, seven months ago. Like I've known him for a couple months now. Um, you guys might um, remember him from linking up. Uh, he w he was on back on Fig recently. Um, he uh, he went there with Blazzy and shit. But um, I'm gonna link up with India's only. And he's going to take me to Little India, and he said that he's, like, super tapped in, and he knows all the spots, and, you know, he knows, like, what to get and all that stuff, and uh, I, I've been asking him hella questions about, like, you know, what foods to get, and, uh, you know, if there's any, like, Indian alcohol, potentially, he said there's, like, beers and shit we can try, so uh, tomorrow, guys, tomorrow I'm gonna link up with Indias only, and we're gonna go to uh, Little India and just experience uh, the culture. One thing, I don't know everything, I don't, like, I, I, don't, I don't know anything, actually, but one thing I do want to try, and I uh, brought this up on stream before is brain marsala or masala masala or marsala is just like a way you cook food and brain is a brain so it's a brain marsala bro it's like made out of cow brain i believe or pig brain i've never tried brain before in my life i've only seen it on like on the discovery channel so i'm excited to try that should i bring some brain back for you no. brain marsala i'm good <laughs> really dude <laughs> You said I'm good. Um, babe, I forgot where AD said this. But this is something I told Riley a long time ago. Remember we would watch the guy with the red bandana best food reviews? Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, Riley would tell me like, babe, like it would be so cool to, you know, for this to be like our thing on YouTube is like go travel food reviewing, right? And you said like you'd be down to do it. But then I've told Riley like, you know, if you, you know, some of his videos, he's eating bus and food. He's going to all these extravagant dinners. And a lot of his videos, he's like drinking camel blood and eating camel liver yeah. and like who knows what else and like snail guts and shit. And I was telling Riley, like, you got to be prepared to eat everything and have an open mind to everything. And you're like, nah, like, I'm not eating no fucking Russian chicken jello, like, you know, type shit uh, from any other cultures. But, um, AD said what like I, exactly the same thing I said, which is like, dude, like with those food channels, I feel like a lot of people see those food channels. They're thinking like that would be so cool to you know travel and eat food, but you got to be down to eat yeah. everything, 100%. bro. Even the like the best food reviews, guys. Like, there's a reason why he's so popular. It's because like, dude, um, I would say for maybe seventy percent of his videos I watch, even the weird stuff that Riley's like, I wouldn't eat that. I would at least like chew it taste it be like mm, what does this taste like you know dude like when he's doing the fucking raw meats and the blood shit like i i i wouldn't be able to do it and also i don't want to seem rude I don't exactly be, that's I don't wanna, my issue i don't want to be rude to someone be like oh blood oh <laughs> and they're just like bro i drink this for breakfast yeah. i'm like dude, i don't want to do that to anyone either <laughs> you know mm -hmm. babe did you speaking of which did you see what happened to me the other day uh, I'm not sure if you're watching, but when I went to go do the IRL stream that you picked me up from right before we, uh, yeah, literally yesterday. Mm -hmm. So I went to go do an IRL stream in Hollywood. I just started the stream. I'm like skating down to Hollywood. I'm like, you know, talking to the chat and shit. And then just from the corner of my eye, I see a, uh, like a tent, like a homeless tent, right outside the homeless tent. There's like 40 bottle, empty bottles of uh, a fireball. And I turned the camera on. I'm like, damn, I'm like hell of fireball. This is crazy. And then the tent was like unzipped where like there's a netting and there, I didn't notice there was like a guy in there. And he's like, hell yeah. He's like, I fuck with fireball, blah, blah, blah. He's like, I'm drinking whiskey right now though. And when I started talking to him about drinking the whiskey. I was like, I drink vodka. And you know, he's a homeless man in a tent. And he's just like, oh yeah. He's like, come here, take a swig. And I'm like, no, 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 thank you. No, thank you. And he's like, nah, come on, come on. He was like, kind of like, you got to take this swig. And like, I took the bottle and I was about to like drink Ew. it. And I was thinking in my head, I'm like, dude, if I drink this right now, like Riley's not going to kiss me ever again. Like I've done a couple weird things where Riley's like, babe, like I have to kiss you afterwards. Like this is gross. You know what I mean? So like when I, when I, I was, I was, uh, I was thinking like the alcohol kills it. You're so nasty. 
I was gonna like waterfall it maybe I don't know dude but like I like I was like oh am I gonna do it I don't know and I, I, I was basically saying like I don't know if you have herpes or something like that and he got mad he was just like give me that bottle back he's like get out of here get that camera out of my face like blah blah he's like and he just got mad because I insinuated he might have herpes well that was kind of just say no I, thank you I don't want it I did and he was like no come on you well got you can it, walk got... away just walk away <sighs> Regardless, I'm not being, I'm not trying to be rude to him, but it's like, that's risky behavior, dude. Who would yeah, have done it? Yeah, you don't it? have to do it. I even, I even asked in the chat, shout out to Harmonize. Harmonize is down for the content. He like does a lot of crazy shit. I was like, Harmonize, would you do this on stream? He's like, hell no. So no. if Harmonize is not going to do it, dude, I'm not doing it either. No. <laughs> I'm not drinking out of that shit. Okay. <sighs> Next topic right uh, we have here is uh, New York City is suing TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and other social media programs or uh, you know so social media sites for young mental health crisis. And obviously, they're bringing actual evidence in, like as in like parents who've had kids who have committed suicide or uh, like you know off themselves or like other stuff has happened where serious things have happened because of social media. And they're bringing specific examples, and the mayor suing these sites you know what i mean like because of these mental health uh, issues um i'm not gonna say that these sites can't cause mental health issues and like people can't t take drastic issues from all you know experiencing bullying i guess from online and shit like that but for new york to worry about that that's crazy bro New York has ex is experiencing probably sim similar stuff to LA and San Francisco, which is like there's kids getting off buses, seeing fucking homeless people, you know, shooting up fentanyl on the on the street. That doesn't cause any trauma, you know what I mean? That doesn't cause any mental health shit in the long term. All that stuff, and realistically, with the online stuff, um, I know it gets harder. Like the older, you know, like the more uh, technology advances. But in my opinion, realistically, I've met enough parents that they are hovering over that phone. You know what I mean? They're hovering over that iPad. They do not let their child, you know what I mean, like consume any type of content that's like not really fit for them. That might be harder when your kid's like 15, 16 though. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, realistically, it's like you can turn off a phone, right? That's like at the end of the day. Yeah. You I know? don't know. I don't know if the solution is targeting the app or the net social well, they're, networks they're, they're doing this the, in my opinion guys this is like some conspiracy theory this they're doing this because guys social they're also targeting discord as well um places like discord social media platforms like twitter all these places they're just as powerful or more powerful than government agencies at this point you know what I mean like fbi or you know like the american government are like they're trying to catch up with this shit. You know what I mean, they got a Twitter. Mm -hmm. They're notifying people via Twitter. The president got Twitter. The president made a big deal about getting banned from Twitter, which is a private company. Why is the president bitching about getting banned from a private company? Mm -hmm. Because the private company has just as much power, you know what I mean, like as like, you know, his influence damn near as, as a fucking president. So I feel like that's what's going on right now is the government agencies or the government in general is just... Uh, trying to attack these social media platforms because they have too much power. They're trying to, like, involve the government in it. So there's not, you know, right now, I guess, you know, like, uh, I, I think Elon Musk is, like, the big, biggest example. Like, every other platform is falling in line. They follow all the rules. They have all the warnings. They're just as woke as everyone else. Elon Musk with Twitter is kind of, like, the maybe one of the biggest specific examples of, like, oh, there is going to be a guy who is going to be rich enough to buy one of these corporations and say, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, I don't care for ad, for ad revenue. I'm, I am going to fucking sp spread whatever information I want. You know what I mean? So yeah. I feel like maybe that might be what's going on is they're trying to get the lead on it and be like, oh, we're not going to allow these private companies to act as private companies anymore because their influence is too large. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't know. It gets too deep, but that's my <laughs> opinion on it. Um, anyways. New York is suing TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, and others. <laughs> I think others is Discord as well. Uh, okay, what else do we have um, here? Oh, yeah, so, guys, the India's only stream is happening on Monday. And then huge shout-out to Fulcrum. Fulcrum has invited me for another photo shoot, guys. Mm -hmm. The last one, didn't it happen during a dollar a minute? I think so. Was that during the 30-day? 
I, I th- think so. I think it was the okay. So that was literally yeah, like a uh, a long ass time ago. Um, Fulcrum hit me up to do a photo shoot for his clothing line during the dollar minute stream, and we you know streamed the whole thing. This time, I don't think I'm gonna stream the whole thing because you know we're not gonna be the in the middle of a dollar minute thing. I'm not even sure if it's gonna be streamed at all. Actually, I haven't even asked. Um, but uh, he invited me to be a part of another photo shoot, so that's gonna be on Tuesday. Let's go. I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I'm proud of you. You know, I was my pl- little model. You know, what I was thinking is. <laughs> call me crazy i was thinking about taking a shower right before going to this photo shoot and you know how like after i shower like i just like let my hair loose and it just becomes like <clears throat> a little mini afro mm-hmm. i was just gonna do the photo shoot like that yeah and just do the the crazy frizzy hair look and then put a beanie on afterwards because i feel like right even riley says that like after the shower my hair actually looks good for, yeah like, it looks really good. an hour but then after that it just like f- falls flat and i have to put a beanie on it you know what i mean but for like Maybe thirty minutes to an after after uh, thirty minutes to an hour after a shower, like it holds itself up into like a little tiny like mini afro type thing. Not mm-hmm. like an afro. I'm gonna just, put some stuff it just, in it. It just holds itself up. What curling lock? No serum. Yeah, cur- pretty much curling lock. Yeah, Riley's been telling me, like one rule I've been always following since high school, which is I just don't use product at all. I guess other than shampoo and conditioner, but I don't use any product at all. But Riley's told me like Yuri, you should try to use curling lock to lock your curls. I don't know how that works. <laughs> like just, just some ge- serum. You're basically saying gel, right? No, no, like a serum, like that. It's like it's a serum, <laughs> and it goes in your hair, and it just makes your hair. I love serums um, that are like serums. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Seal it like seals your ends where it makes it like glossy and nice. Okay, we'll try it out. I feel like I'm gonna look like. Remember, I showed you a uh, Howard Stern. And you're like, you look like Howard Stern. I feel like he does that. He like locks. No, his- he does like some perm shit. Oh yeah, it kind of looks like a perm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you were giving Har- Howard Stern. All right, yo guys, one last random topic here. I'm not sure if this is even like a like a topic or not, but I just thought it was really funny, dude. Hmm. I consume a bunch of Brian Arnett content. I'm not going to lie. He's funny, bro. Brian Arnett is just fucking hilarious. But Brian Arnett had Jeff Wan's song on his podcast. And then some some drama had uh, unveiled, right? Between him and another skateboarder called Jason Parks, who's like the skateboarder from Hawaii. And I'm not going to get into into, into everything because it's so much drama or whatever. So much lore. Lore <laughs> and drama. But if you guys are any, you know, like interested in any like skateboarding stuff at all or any of the skateboarding lore, look at... <laughs> more brian arnett the video of him uh talking about the jeff one song thing and i think gifted hater reacts to it as well that shit's so fucking funny and hilarious bro a shout out to jeff one song he came to our uh, end of 30 day stream but just this whole situation is just like very humorous i was trying to show it to riley and as i was trying to show it to riley i'm like i have to explain to her i like, have no idea i was like i have to explain He's to like her, this like, is so funny i'm just like <laughs> i'm so confused i was like i'm trying to explain like 13 years of fucking skateboard lord to riley trying to explain one joke i was like okay it's over with but if anyone's interested that shit's that shit's hella funny um also guys wait are you gonna do it i think you should do it no don't can we don't we don't don't. we don't have to promise it don't no because you're gonna be annoying no i'm not yeah you are don't Don't tell me what i'm going to do i know you you don't like when i tell you what you're gonna do can you just stop oh my god dude wait a minute sing no sing it babe no can we get a riley Carey? you hate when i sing no i don't I'm on the a- mic every time before the 10 talks i try to like sing a little song because i'm like oh my headphones are on i'm in the microphone i'm in the studio let me like actually sound like hear how i sound and you get so annoyed he's like can you please stop can you please stop because I'm just like fuck i suck be- no it's not because you suck it's because guys right before the podcast i'm in rush mode i'm like angle lights uh you know mouse uh, like uh like uh make sure the the stream deck is right like i'm trying to make sure everything's in place trying to get everything ready and then riley is just sit- like during those 10 minutes of just adhd trying to fucking get everything in order riley's sitting right here going ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. and then like after like five minutes of hearing like some random vocals i'm like babe please chill i'm like bro i'm like trying to like figure this out right now dude sorry i'm not trying to be i love your singing i always (laughs) tell you i love your singing but it's just like in the middle of like um of me trying to set a million things up just 
Someone just like fucking sinking in the background, just like hella distracting. Sorry, babe. I'm sorry, dude. Really, dude. I won't ever sing again. Oh, you see, this is one thing that's. I think key in a relationship is we have to let each other be each other. <laughs> no shit. I think it's the cool. Like, I those are the best relationships, right? When you're like in movies or shows where they're like. The mom looks one way, and then, like, uh, the dad's another way, and then she's just like, yeah, I don't know anything about him. He's just, he's doing his own thing, you know? Like, But they actually do, like, love each other. Yeah, that's how I feel like I am. And no one understands it, but, like, everyone's just like, yeah, I don't know what's going on. Like, you know, I'm just like, okay. You know what that reminds me of is uh, the relationship between your mom and her uh, her husband right now. Oh, yeah, they are hella, like, they're best friends. I remember, like... They just do their own thing, though, like... Exactly. I remember a long time ago, we were, like, uh, I was um over there, like, visiting the Bay Area, and, like... Uh, someone is like asking Riley's mom, like they're asking Riley's mom if she has uh her husband's location, and uh she's like hell no, she's like I don't fucking care what he's doing all day. She's like I'm trying to do my own thing, like like she's like I don't fucking care what he's doing, blah blah. And I was like that's so. She's funny. like that's so weird. <laughs> yeah yeah, like she's like that's so fucking weird. I was like that's funny, you know. Yeah. But also. But then they also have like their projects that they do together. <sighs> yeah and yeah. And they have just a cute relationship. But also I I really you know like. Riley and I have um each other's uh, location, and I literally I don't ever check it I'm, unless you're on your way home, and I'm just like yeah, wondering how long you're gonna take. Exactly, like in my perspective, like the thing that happened with Blazy, where remember Blazy said that he gone to uh, like a car crash recently, and his phone immediately alerted everyone that he was in a car crash and uh, his location. Did it? Yeah, he he basically said that um his phone sensed the car crash. I don't know how, but uh, That's crazy. it texted all his immediate contacts, such as his mom and his like brother and sister, and it told them like, um you know, Blasi was involved in a car crash uh in this location, and Blasi was fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like he was able to say like, yo, I'm chilling, chilling. But like imagine you're unconscious, yeah. like on the floor, knocked out or something like that. Like that's the real benefit of phones. Back in the day, you'd have to pay for Life Alert, like 120 bucks a month for that type of service you know what i mean just for your just for some like device to notice you fell yeah but now you got your phone that you know with uh riley and i it's just like yo if anything happens where uh so i disappear or riley disappears like at least we have the f- most current location right. you know what I mean? of where the fuck your phone was exactly <laughs> thank god <laughs> thank god <laughs> speaking of which um i want you to put a uh, gps tracker under your skin you're down? No. Oh, why not? Cause. <laughs> Cause. That's weird. No, I would never. Put... A dog. A dog? Oh, would you put do that to beans? Chip him. Chip him. I don't like. What is that? Is it like some Hunger Games shit where they like inject it into you? Yeah, it literally is injected into you. Literally just like Hunger Games, yeah. Ugh, that always creeped me out. Hey, but speaking of beans, guys, I'm not sure if you, anyone remembers, but maybe a couple episodes ago, I told a story of how Riley left the door open and beans escaped and the, you know, I was uh, sleeping naked in bed and our neighbor came into our house and was like, hey, your dog was running outside in the rain. Like, here you go. And I was like, I'm coming down, sir. Like, stairs. Like, you know, chill, chill. <laughs> and blah, blah, whatever. And he's just like, I'm just leaving the dog and closing the door. We still don't know what neighbor it was, but we were like. I have a feeling is our <laughs> we were like uh, that hates us. we were like oh my god like uh um beans escaped right but riley said that she was talking to our neighbors the other day and apparently we're not the only ones the only ones that's happened to thank god <laughs> the other one's like a fucking purebred ass dog too oh yeah uh, one of our neighbors has like a shibu or shiba shiba, I think? shiba or shibu I think it's a shiba and apparently their dog also escaped but even further our uh beans only like stays in the courtyard he doesn't you know he knows that outside is dangerous i'm hoping but their dog, like, apparently was outside in the streets, mm-hmm. like, running around, and the, they had to go catch his ass. I was telling Riley the other day, I'm not sure if... The, I don't know whose dog this was, guys, but, like, I was outside walking uh, Beans, and this... Ra- like, it scared me. I felt like... I kind of felt like a pussy for a second. I was just, like... Uh, I was, like, walking Beans normally, like, how I always do, just on my phone, flicking through Instagram, and then I just see something darting from the back of me, and I'm just, like... <gasps> Like I go like this I'm like what the hell And it was like a tiny little dog Smaller <laughs> than beans But I look around There's no owner I'm like what the hell I'm like, And I don't recognize the dog either I'm like what the fuck I'm like whose dog is this Like I, I recognize everyone else's dog At this point In our neighborhood So I'm like whose dog is this I don't see an owner and Beans is playing with them And I'm like okay This is random And then uh, 
some time passes. Uh, Beans is just playing with them. So I was just thinking like, all right, whatever. Like I'm gonna Beans like just have fun playing with this fool. So like literally like five, seven minutes pass by. This lady comes by walking her dog, and I'm like, uh, hey, like I'm like, is this your dog? She's like, no. She's like, I don't know whose dog this is. And there's literally just some random dog so like random. running around. And uh, so that we're not building. At ones. a certain point, I was just like. I was like, Beans, you gotta say goodbye. Like, I'm not gonna take this dog home with me. No. I wish I was you would have told me, I would have seen. What am I supposed to do? Like just wait there with the dog? No, I would have seen which one it was. Uh Because I feel like I might have known. I just left it. He'll figure it out. (laughs) They obviously did. Hopefully. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But um we're also this was like in a speaking of things running by us last night when we were walking to our car oh my god i like there is like the where was that a church yeah that was a church yeah, right? it was a church and there was like these little steps to get up to the church but it was like fenced off and i was like looking at the church and all of a sudden i see like this little white thing dart across the steps and i'm just like oh fuck i know what that is and then all of a sudden it just like zooms like almost touches my fucking foot mm-hmm and it, like I literally scream, and Yuri got so mad at me. I didn't get so mad little at you. Little rat. No, it was a little mouse. A little mouse runs over the street, like across the street as Riley and I are walking. Riley goes, Wah! like freaks out, right? <laughs> okay, okay. I- you freak out for a second. I don't care, dude, right? And then for the next 30, 40 seconds, Riley's just like, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, not like that. No, I wasn't. And I'm just like, babe, I'm like, bro, like complaining about it doesn't make it better you know what I mean? like there's always the, the, there's like there's those videos that you'll see on like on instagram where like something traumatic happens right and all the dudes aren't fucking yo what can i do to help what's going on here like who can i drag out of the fire and the women are just standing there here we go Here's the... you're like what well, does it help to just stand there and scream dude like like that's, I had that's, to get it out. That's what I was telling you. I'm just like, bro, like, stop screaming. It's a phobia. Like, you already saw the mouse, and like, you already ran by. You don't have to keep continue screaming. Okay, let it be a fucking spider. If the, okay, to be fair, babe, I was thinking to myself, if we saw a spider mouse sized that ran across, yeah, I think for the next ten minutes, I'd be like, exactly. I'd be skipping. So shut up. I'd be like skipping and jumping and going like, yo, what the fuck? Uh, yeah. Yeah. You have okay. Riley has an actual phobia over like like it's. I literally couldn't stop. Like my breath, I had to like slow my breath down. <laughs> um, it was scary. Hey, okay. But speaking of the differences between guys and girls, um, I sent you that Instagram post the other day, what? right? Of like, uh, it like, stu- you know, scientific studies are subjective. It depends on who's doing the study, who they have in the study, all that stuff. But it was between, um, baby girls and baby boys, right? Where they like put an object between the the mom and the kid right and they see how the either the baby girl or the baby boy reacts oh the God. boys are like trying to destroy the object climb around it climb over it the girls just sit down and start crying like mom come get me you know and it was basically like a thing where the scientific study showed like women want to be understood like oh he, he feel my pain where guys are like let me get over the pain as quick as possible doing whatever needs to be done you know what i mean problem solving over complaining Shut up. I'm like, too, you just bother oh, like, me. <laughs> really? Yes. <laughs> Why? You're so ugh, annoying. Thanks. But also the death rate on men oh is goodness. like way higher than women. Why? Really, dude? <laughs> this has been a great Wait, before we end Sunday. it. Sunday. You know what, you know, you know what uh, was one of the subjects or topics that I forgot to add was like a... Uh, a new science uh, study that came out that said, uh, "Guess who owns the most?" I know, I saw a woman. <laughs> guess who owns the most amount of private property? That makes sense. Single women, women. Single women, because in my experience, guys are more likely to be down to live on a couch and smoke out of a bong and eat fucking, you know, ramen. Ramen every day, whereas a woman kind of has like a higher standard mm-hmm. for herself. <laughs> where a woman's more likely like. I need my own place and like a bathroom and a clean place to live. You know what I mean? Like where guys are more in my experience, that's particularly like with my people I've grown up around, like guys are way more likely to be like, fuck it, dude, I'll live in the shed. You know, women aren't really down to do that. (laughs) Yeah. Or like, you know, to go, uh, do stupid life risking shit either. I don't want to sound like a sexist. I was just joking. Okay. I was kidding. Okay. 
I don't care. Let's wrap it up. All right, guys. Um. Anyways, shout out to everyone that has joined another episode of Ten Talks. Let's go. Let us know what you guys think about the the background. Like I said, um, we're going to put more stuff up, and I I think we have only mentioned uh, mentioned this once a long time ago. But the plan is like this shelf right here is like going to be like the stuff that I you know collect and I'm interested in. I I want Riley to um make this whole shelf like shit that you collect and you're interested in, but. You don't really collect like a bunch of yeah, little don't toys and trinkets like I do. So we got to figure out what, what we can put up there. Posters. Yeah, for sure. You're like, I'll, I'll, I'll find some vibes that are me. Oh, wait. Um, remember that uh, neon sign that we mm-hmm. have? Maybe we can put that here for yeah. you. Mm-hmm. But also we have to build up your background downstairs too. It, we'll figure it out. We'll figure One it out. One thing at a time. All right. Yo, thank you guys so much, man. Um, yeah, let us know what you guys think. If we should continue building up the, the um, background with no green screen or continue using the green screen sorry <laughs> regardless cheers everyone we're gonna drink a little glass of water with some rock star before we end the pod right here cheers drop a like drop a comment in the comment section if you have um not in the chat but in the comic section below the comic Ta- comment you know what i mean also thank you to everyone who's dropped a sub we're at 2000 subs now Woohoo! let's go w2000 subs um thank you to everyone who dropped a sub and uh, if you guys haven't already, please drop us up as well. It really helps go to the channel. We've hit two hours. Let's go. W, everyone. Let's go. We're going to do a short after show and potentially a surprise stream uh, as well. But we'll see what happens. But <laughs> let's see if we can do. Now it's getting late. Let's see. Uh, I knew it was going to happen uh, um, late, though. But let's see if we can do a smooth outro, guys. Wait, hold on. Hold on. I don't want to mess it up. And also, um, maybe we could flip it so I set on fire and you don't set on fire. But we'll see. We'll see right now. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, TTS song. And then. Let's go. All right, peace, everyone. Better hurry. Spark it up with no worries. Harmonious gang with the big bro, Yuri. Hyphy. Get lit just like me. Big boss up. Chop it up with Riley. You better come with it or kick rocks because you now tuned in to 10 Talks. Now let's get lifted and take a shot. You are now tuned in.